Everyone, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. Uh, thank you to those of you who um, came to the 9-11 ceremonies today at the park. Um, first up today, we have recognizing enslaved Africans in the African community. Um, please come on up. Yeah. Um, I think you just kind of want to give us an update. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Should I sit here? Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And my colleague, Kathy oh, Sears. All right. All right. Thank you so much for having us here tonight. It really is just sort of an update to let you know after a couple of years of research, we've done quite a bit to educate the community in Irvington about the enslaved Africans and their history uh, here in Irvington. We led tours to the purported burial ground at the last Celebrate Irvington Day. We um, wrote an article for The Roost. We gave a presentation to the standing room only. Thank you for those of you who were there. And uh, this Rocktoberfest, people can come to us with their beer. We're going to have a table and, and educate further about what, what we're going to be doing. So in terms of our ask tonight is basically we just want to have your help in pulling together a consortium of interested parties here in Irvington. Now, that would be the Landmarks Preservation, Inc., or the ARB, certainly would be part of the Historical Society. And then with that group, we would create a, uh, a, a formal presentation to the Board of Trustees that would have a lot more detail in terms of how we would envision all of these folks envisioning a, a permanent commemoration here in Irvington, whether it's a piece of art, uh, ongoing education, uh, certainly working with the schools. So I have reached out to uh, Paul Ficolara a couple weeks ago, never heard back from him. I reached out to Earl uh, Ferguson, I hadn't heard back from him. And I have reached out to David Zweibel, and I have not heard back from him. <laughs> so I think, yeah. And these are really the three principles that I'm sort of envisioning after being in this town for a couple of decades to work with really decision makers in terms of how we can move forward with uh, with this. And then I just also wanted to add that um, the fundraising would not be any heavy lifting for the Board of Trustees or for the village itself. We're planning on doing community fundraising, education. We are, a couple of us are going to some grant writing seminars where we'll learn how to write uh, applications for grants for corporate and then for also the state and county arts councils. So that would be the board doing. So I guess what we just need is help to get in touch with these, <laughs> these you, uh, individuals. If you don't hear back from them Friday, I'd be happy to uh, Thank you. send an email on your behalf. Thank you very much. I'm guessing they were all just busy. Oh, I know. It's, you know. It's you so so, so yes. if, would you like any other suggestions? I mean, I, I totally agree with you that, you know, somebody from the historical society who would be kind of Pat, working Pat is, with you to Pat come Ryan out. wants to be on that. And who does? Pat Ryan. Pat, okay. Mm -hmm. So Pat maybe and somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Earl is on that mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's possibility. Um, um, and you mentioned um, the landmark preservation group, which I know some have moved out of town and that's difficult. I, I do now have all the names of the people who have been members that might help you if you were interested if you don't sure. hear from Paul. Well, we're really looking for decision makers, people yeah. who, you know, yeah. can come sure. to the table with, yeah. well, no, it can't go there because the village doesn't own that land and it can't go here, you know, instead of coming and taking up too much time of the Board of Trustees to find out, well, we didn't have the information right, so, yeah. Right, I, I agree with you. Um, I can help you with ownership issues, just so you know, so okay. if you ever, Thanks, if you're yeah. starting to look around, not that I'm pick out spots for you, but just no, if you have yeah, questions right. about areas, I can help Perfect. You. Thank you very much. So I was going to suggest my experience with Earl is it's best to contact the office. That's what I did. Because <laughs> I can't find his email anywhere. I actually wrote Not a email. letter and yeah. sent it to his office. <laughs> I, I, can, I can call him too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know everybody was on vacation. But so, no. but you did mention the ARB. So, a member of the ARB, it would be. I mean, I don't think you mentioned a, a member of the ARB. Well, I know Gail Weiler is oh, a member yeah, of the ARB, yeah, and she's yes. also a member of the uh, uh -huh. Recognizing Enslaved Africans in Irvington okay. Committee. So that, to me, seems like a Oh, I didn't hear you say Gail. I didn't. Oh, OK. Yeah, <laughs> you mentioned it, there it is. All right. I, I don't mean to meddle too much in your plan, because I think it's, it's yeah, having, having a group of people that can mm -hmm. meet with you and Kathy, I guess. And, yeah. And uh, anybody else? Think it's right. um, And the education effort, I really um, applaud you for thinking about how you can uh, do that. I don't know who from the schools might be a contact for. I've been in touch with all the principals. We've uh -huh. been uh, in contact. We've been talking. Uh, you know, the fourth grade always comes to Phillipsburg Manor, which is where I work as the education right. director there. So we are definitely in cahoots that when they come back to their classrooms, they learn about the actual 15 names of the enslaved people right here in Irvington. 16. 16. Yeah. So yeah, we've been in touch with them. OK, so oh, thank you very much, no problem. Mayor Smith. So well, no, no. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is review of draft local law amending the Irvington zoning code to create the North Broadway mixed use district. So um, we have, um, as I know we've reported before, we've, we've been uh, very interested in. Um, well, you've been collecting many comments, obviously, from the community, and that's that's uh, that's great. That's why the public hearing is open as long as it is. Um, but we were particularly interested. Uh, we noted that we hadn't received any feedback from the properties in the district that you're actually proposing to rezone. So we um, were fortunate enough to uh, have contact with the owners of the what we affectionately call the Maxon property, and. Uh, they were, uh, we, we encouraged them to, to make comments so you could consider them as you go forward. Um, and they have, uh, they, they did some extensive comments, as, as I think you saw in writing, but they're, they're here to, um, to present to you um, and get an opportunity to ask questions if you have any. But, um, so they're going to they're gonna do that now. Um, once they're done, um, we'll sit here um, with Marianne and go through uh, the, the list of all the comments that we've accumulated, or at least the topics that have been brought up during the comment period, so that you have an idea of what was brought up, and we'll get a sense, a better sense of, uh, of where you stand on it, what you what you think about the comments, and and go forward from there. But in the meantime, um, you can give us just a minute or two to get set up here, because they do want to show something on the screen here. So, um, does anything want to? No. Good. Or, Wait, no. What's that? Um, Okay. You, you have a laptop, you said? Yes. Yep. Okay. So. Okay. Sorry, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll stand here, that way we can all, yeah. while Dave's yeah, sitting on the laptop, laptop yeah. give a little background. Okay. Uh, Mayor Smith, uh, member of the Board of Trustees, Taylor Palmer with the law firm of Clay and Fader, on behalf of the property owners. Uh, tonight I am joined uh, by property owners Hannah Rubin and David Rubenzoff by the estate of Stanley Rubenzoff. Oh, thank you. Oh, look at that, very formal. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practice for next Monday for, uh, for the public hearing. We do really appreciate the board um, giving us this opportunity this evening during a work session. We know that's uncharacteristic, so we do appreciate uh, the openness and the availability of both uh, the village administrator uh, and the village of attorney. Um, just by way of uh, brief background, of course, we are here, as the uh, administrator mentioned, in connection with the North Broadway Mixed Use Zoning District. Um, the property we are concerned uh, representing this evening is 76 North Broadway, which, again, is the max of the properties. Um, we are joined also by our consultants. Uh, we did provide a submission to the board uh, earlier last week that included some details about the property, just relating back to the comprehensive plan and ultimately what um, our, our clients are looking at at this property. <coughs> Tonight I am joined by David Smith uh, of David Smith Planning and Development, as well as Susan Janeshill of Aspect 120 Landscape Architecture. And I know these consultants have worked with the village on other um, applicant projects uh, in this village. Um, as you may know, we previously presented a, on the June 17th uh, opening of the public hearing, and, and we appreciate that the board kept the public hearing open knowing that the summer was here and that there may be uh, more opportunity to provide comment later in the year. And now we're, we're back again, and it gave us a lot of time to be able to go and prepare uh, real uh, deliverables that we are going to go through uh, for the benefit of the board and those of the public. And we do uh, plan to provide a similar uh, summarized presentation for the record at the uh, public hearing next week. 
Uh, since that meeting, on August 5th, again, we did meet with the administrator uh, and the village attorney just to go through some general ideas, mostly just focused on what the bulk intensity requirements uh, are proposed in this local law, as well as to discuss some other uses that might be appropriate for the sewing district. So we will go through specifically those uses. Uh, we did provide, again, the written submission that has a little bit more detail uh, to those items, but we're going to try and uh, work those into our, our presentation uh, before you this evening. So before I turn over to uh, David and Susan, just wanted to give you a little bit of additional background. Um, as we noted in our submission, the Maxon property today was previously the Timex Corporation property. So back in the 1970s, the Timex Corporation, you know, in this in this beautiful location, set back off North Broadway, you know, up really set back and, and off the hill, was looking for a, a new the next venture for, for Timex and was looking to sell this property. Uh, they tried to market the property for a number of years were unsuccessful in doing so and did ultimately receive a, uh, a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals, which again still applies to the land today uh, and the property as it exists. So the existing use on the property today is an office use, it's in a corporate headquarters uh, for the Maxon Companies. Um, there's a little bit more background about it, but it ultimately the use today allows for up to 80 employees. So there's existing traffic over Strawberry Lane for that particular purpose. And what we decide, what we tried to do with our, our design development items that David and Susan are going to review is show just how functional and workable this property is. And the sort of the focus of our discussion tonight is while size does matter, the design and how it organ is organized on the site and the characteristics of the site is really the important aspect. So a lot of that is going to work into this, uh, this discussion. Just one piece um, about that uh, variance that I did want to also note. Oh, I already did, excuse me. It is a, it's a, it continues today, so it does run with the land. So it, the use that is existing, again, runs with the land. Um, with that point, um, I will turn now uh, to David now that he's got the uh, plan up on, excuse me, up to Susan, um, who will go through um, some of the background about the landscape and design, and then we'll turn to David to go through some more of the planning and uses, particularly the senior assisted living facility use. And then we'll provide some more background about um, what was a prior contract vendee for this property for the benefit of the board. Hi. Um, so as we said, I'm Susan Jane Schoen with Land, and, uh, Aspect 120 lands, Landscape Architecture. I am a landscape architect and urban planner. Um, and um, we were asked, David and I were asked to take a look at the existing zoning code as well as the proposed or the draft <coughs> proposed zoning code to see what it meant for for um, the owners of this property. Um, this is the um, analysis of all the setbacks for the proposed zoning code. Um, from our reading of it, we, we saw that it's a 75 foot setback from from Broadway, which you can see there, um, and then a 50 foot setback from all the other property lines. Um, the entrance is off the of Strawberry Lane, as as um, as Taylor had just told you, which is right over there where the cursor is. Um, so what the lines are showing you, you see the 250 foot setback. That is the proposed setback for um, for any building on the site, any new building on the site for redevelopment. And then um, between the 250 feet and the 300 foot setback, um, the proposed zoning code is allowing a two story building in that area. And then beyond that 300 foot setback, um, it's allowing a, a three story building. Um, so one thing that we wanted to point out is, you know, the, the restriction of, of the area that can be developed. Um, we understand that trying to keep the, um, the aesthetic quality of, of the Broadway corridor, particularly in, in this particular area where there is a nice setback and a nice sort of pastoral lawn in front of this, this building, as, or this property as well as the one just to the north of it. So um, we appreciate that, but we really think that there's, um, it may be a little excessive and there could be um, um, a, a little give and take about how far back it has to be. Um, one thing that we wanted to point out is doing this analysis, we came up with a, that it's restricting um, building with all these setbacks, 68% of the site is, they can't really work with based on based on the setback. And that's, you know, almost 70% of the site. Um, so that's really a pretty tight restriction. Um, David, if you could go to the next slide. So 
what we're asked to do is to take a look at what we're looking at. Um, could you zoom a little bit into those photos? So this is probably the, the location that's most visible. Um, can, can you guys see that, or is that difficult to see? I think if you can, you do like a increase a, a, the size. I, I need to do that. I'm making yeah. Increase do you the have a, size wherever there's a that plus thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, no, I yeah. Yeah, that's right up there. Yeah, you could do it back. That'll work. Yeah. Okay, so basically this is a uh, photo, if you go up to the photos, um, the existing photos showing um, pretty much the location that is um, the most visible onto the site. You can see the lawn, um, and this is similar to one of the locations that AKRF had put together for their presentation that, that um, we did review their presentation. Um, so what we did is we put a building, a two-story building, approximately 200 feet back, and you can see um, where the blue um, shading there is, is the area that would be visible, um, which is already relatively minimum, in, and this is with leaf is on. Obviously, it's in the summertime. It's last a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, it, it's really minimally visible right now, but we believe even with that 200-foot setback, you could make it practically invisible from from the street during the summertime months, uh, and in the wintertime months, depending on the the um, the plant material used. Right now, we have privet there that's blocking most of the way. If it had to be um, changed into an evergreen use, we could replace that with evergreen and then year round. So here's showing um, a photorealistic uh, rendering of what it could look like in the future. Um, and you know, if you zoom out, David, um, basically that photorealistic ren rendering of the two-story building with the 200-foot setback with additional vegetation is just showing um, the, the addition of vegetation in those locations that, that um, we put on the diagram here. And then if you go to the next slide, if you see the viewpoint that we're, we're going to take the, the, the sight line from, from, that's the cut line is A there. Um, you can see the existing sight line from both the street as well as across the street and the sidewalk. Those dashed lines show you that existing, you could just see, probably with the leaves off, you could just see the top of the mansion house. You could hardly even see that lower building. Um, and if there was, if like the full build out of um, the zoning was putting at 200 feet back from, from, um, from the uh, right of way line, um, with the vegetation, with a little bit of added vegetation and looking at the existing slope and maybe modifying the slope just minor, um, you know, it really could be um, possible to um, block the view of any new structure at that height. Um, and um, the other point, I just had another point I have to say, but I forgot what that point was, but it'll come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no, question, and then yes. maybe we'll you. Maybe go back one slide. Uh, that configuration of buildings, mm -hmm. do you know what the coverage of that is? Is that, um, I is that the 20% coverage? Is it those buildings that's Well, on this one, you have to recognize that this wasn't drawn, the parking lot hasn't been drawn in for what might be required in terms of parking yeah. for that kind of a build out. Um, let me see if I. that existing retaining existing structures um, the building coverage on that is under, under proposed zoning or under, under current zoning this is for under proposed zoning I believe so it is the 20 20 percent yes oh so that meets the 12, okay yes it definitely meets, it meets within it um, and it probably took into consideration that there was um, some benefit of keeping the existing mansion building. Right, if, right. exactly, yeah. Always for that. And then is that a realistic layout? I mean, might somebody? Um, it, it's somewhat realistic. It's not very creative, obviously. It's sort of like the worst case scenario okay. is what it is. Um, it's, the thing that's not realistic about it is that for, for that size of a structure, the amount of parking that would be necessary for it and to work, it, work that in it depends on the use of what that building might be. 
But this is it's okay. Mary Ann, I think um, one of the important points about this graphics was just to show the visual relationship of a potential building to with respect to the buffer well, and the I, setback. Oh, I yes. understand that. So, I yeah. understand that, but I was just curious when yeah. I looked at that right. what whether that was whether that could be done. Okay. See, my issue just in the <laughs> my one in the, in the initial issue by moving it so far forward, you can't make use of the grade to do underbuilding parking as easily. So, because it's not, you know, so you'd have to pull it back to have driveways and stuff for if you're coming in at the lower grade. I mean, you could always do something different on the higher grade side, but it seems like you're fighting topography at that point. Indeed, and part of what we've submitted in our, our, our paperwork is to show that the FAR is, while it's, it's represented as trying to add some additional FAR for development potential, really it's restricting and, and really pushing you to put parking underneath the building, which adds additional costs. So while there is already site constraints for trying to maintain setbacks, we're trying to, to make sure that there's a feasible development potential of the site, which would account for additional FAR. So well, I'd have to say that actually in terms of looking at uh, the issue, overall issues environmentally, having in-building parking is far better than having large asphalt spaces externally. So the cost justification is really an environmental one in terms of runoff and heat island effects and et cetera, et cetera. Indeed, and we're trying to propose workable solutions that account for that. Typically, for example, if you had a below market rate unit, they may allow additional density. I'm just making a connection I'm stuff. Talking, you're talking about office units here, not... Absolutely. I'm just making an, an assimilation to another type of use. We're trying to incentivize maintaining the mansion house, for example, provides for additional FAR. We're trying to work within the confines that have the restrictions of the setbacks that also would allow for additional Again, by being forced or, or required to put parking under a building. It's not conforming to proposed setbacks. So what I, I, what I hear listening to you, just to echo back, is you're actually changing the goalpost as you speak, and as opposed to just talking about what's being presented here. So um, if you have wider requirements, then you should probably address them in different types of diagrams than this particular one. Right, and I, I think what we're just saying is is um, added flexibility would be um, helpful. Um, you know, definitely I think to give incentives to do structured parking is, is definitely important, but um, the, the flexibility of the cost, what you're saying, the reason for the setback, mm -hmm. I think it'd be wonderful to put it all underneath, um, but to require that setback doesn't allow for the design flexibility of whoever's going to come in and design this. It's not going to be us. We're just analyzing yeah, the this parking's space. got to be somewhere. Oh, no, the parking. And honestly, the parking is probably going to be within the area that's developable because there's not much more space. I think whatever parking would have to go into um, almost any use um, would be a significant amount, I think we have it in the letter of um, if we had uh, office use, I think it was, it would be 150 spaces, which would require a structured parking of some point, part, um, either under a building or a separate, separate parking structure. Mm -hmm. um, so either way, it's probably going to happen that any new development will be in a parking structure um, with the minimum height requirements um, to put it within the building. It's going to be even harder to put it within the building. Um, you know, because because we can't lift the building up even more because there's that height requirement of the building. Unless there was, I mean, since we're talking about paper zoning right now, I mean, right. you could do something to add a, if, I'm not sure how to exactly say that, but you could add some sort of a, a, a benefit to parking underground mm -hmm. without increasing exactly. the overall height of the building. Exactly. Exactly. There Given, are things you could do. Exactly. To and and there's happen. incentivizing yes. incentivizing the right way of doing it, you know, because the incentive right now is the economic incentive. If you could put it within the zoning code to make it, you know, to balance that out, it would be helpful. Because, I mean, that's the other thing. I just wanted to say, I think everyone's reflection is we like the grass in the front, mm -hmm. but there is, on both those two properties, there is an extensive amount of blacktop everywhere, and that's kind of another thing that I think we have to be looking at in terms of moving away from that much exposed blacktop, if mm -hmm. possible, through potential 
incentives in the code, but we really haven't discussed that in detail. But. Yep, I very much agree. Um, yeah, at this point, we'd ask uh, Dave to kind of go through. So it, it's a good segue into discussions about particular uses that are being considered for uh, the property, sort of tying it back to the comprehensive plan that led to uh, this uh, this uh, zoning uh, change or proposed zoning change. So, Dave, if you uh, could go through. No, do you mind if I just stay here? Or? That's fine. Yeah. Oh. No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so, just for the record, Dave Smith, uh, Principal of Planning and Development Advisors. I, I think just to start off, um, uh, and it's sort of it, um, full disclosure, uh, our office assisted the village with the uh, preparation of their comprehensive plan update uh, that was uh, recently adopted. And I think uh, as part of that, um, the issue that the village is going through right now with rezoning this portion of North Broadway was one of the reasons that the village undertook that, um, uh, that undertaking, the, the uh, comprehensive plan update, recognizing that those properties um, probably because of their uh, current use and historic use were probably not um, rezoned or, or, or zoned uh, for um, uh, uses that the village may want to see. And so uh, I think part of the, the challenge from the design team in working with uh, the Maxim uh, folks is to evaluate the zoning. And, and you know, in the, the cover letter that, uh, that Taylor had prepared and submitted, you know, one of the issues going back historically was that this property uh, needed to have a variance in order to um, have their their particular office use. And part of the reason for the variance is they just they, they couldn't get historically they couldn't get uh, folks to um, want to invest in, in in the property. And so the the concern is that over time uh, we don't want to have history repeat itself. And so I think the village is trying to be proactive in. Um, looking at uh, zoning uh, techniques that could be applied not only to this property but to others. And so uh, what we've tried to do is evaluate the uh, proposed uh, requirements. And I think you've heard from Susan that uh, as she's prepared some of these conceptual plans that you, the, the zoning may be perhaps too restrictive uh, with respect to uh, the amount of property that's allowed to be uh, reasonably developed. I think that's part of the exercise of going through this visual analysis is that there may be, the, I think the goal was, in the comp as a, uh, identified in the comprehensive plan, was to preserve the character of the, uh, kind of the visual character of the corridor, the Broadway corridor. And uh, part of the benefit of having gone through the, the exercise that Susan did was that through creative use of landscaping, um, there's a, still that opportunity to uh, preserve the, uh, the existing visual corridor and still allow for some additional flexibility uh, for design and layout. And Mark, as you had mentioned, um, that we haven't done specific designs for uh, specific types of uses, but we do understand that they require, there's certain parking requirements, uh, there are layout requirements for uh, different types of uses. And <coughs> with respect to um, the uh, uses that are uh, considered in the cover letter we've uh, identified that, that uh, senior housing I think you've included assisted living as as a uh, as a component um, what we certainly it's been my experience in the in the marketplace within Westchester County that senior housing is there's a crying need for senior housing all types of senior housing not just assisted living um, but also uh, independent living or active uh, senior housing. So we would suge suggest that the village consider those types of uses. Um, and also to evaluate uh, in the marketplace, there are certain thresholds, um, uh, economies of scale for uh, these types of uses, these senior types of uses. And uh, just on a preliminary basis, based on what uh, Susan has um, evaluated from kind of layout and coverage, um, we think it's very challenging to get these types of uses, these senior types of uses, uh, to be accommodated on uh, a four-acre parcel uh, like the Maxim property. And, and certainly, um, there are other communities that have four-acre thresholds for um, senior types of uses. Um, but they, the, the coverage requirements and the setbacks are slightly different and the FAR requirements are different. And so we would just ask you just to be 
uh, reflective of the uh, the market needs because again um, I think we'd want to avoid putting its zoning in place that doesn't allow for anything in the marketplace to come and uh, for an investor wanting to redevelop a piece of property uh, so there was the uh, uh, the, the kind of the, uh, the alternative uh, senior housing types uh, that we would uh, suggest and I think we've included some others um, uh, conference center, I think there was you know, an embassy, some of these other maybe larger type of uses that may uh, lend themselves. Embassy? An embassy. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find the, the, the listing of... Um, you also had museum, but museums museums. Museum. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's in the, regardless, the, in the yeah, conference center and or spa, as part of these uh, special uh, permit types of uses. So um, as we go through the process, or as you go through the process in evaluating uh, the zoning, we would hope that you would be, uh, con or consider um, what we've been, what we've presented to you tonight, what we've provided to you in writing. Um, certainly as a, a project team, we're available to answer any questions you have uh, if they come up as part of the process going forward. I, yep. I Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. I thought you would. Um, on the, in, in your letter, uh, this, this the, the, the letter was you know, helpful, but there's one thing I don't understand. Will you say, okay, on the, on the fourth page, and Susan, you referred to it too, you're talking about an office use that required 150 parking spaces would cover over 52,272 square feet land. Well, that sentence is a little confusing to me. Do you mean the office use plus the parking space, or do you just mean the office use? Is one question. The other question is, where did you get the, the office use that requires 150 parking spaces? That'd be a pretty big office use. I mean, because right now, the building, um, the limit in the uh, variance is, is, is 80. You can only have... Um, 80 and 40s, and this probably not going to certainly not going to translate to 150 parking spaces, right. although it's generally done by square footage rather than employees. But anyway, if you could just ex explain that, I mean, because the one, the one thing I, I mean, I get most of what you're getting at, but what I, I don't, I can't, you know, walk away from this meeting understanding what sort of I understand that, that you want a greater FAR, right? Which, I, I think I explained to you that I, at, at the meeting that the board was leaning toward a 30, a 30, a point 30 FAR mm -hmm. rather than the 25. That makes a big difference. Um, but, but also I don't get a sense from this of what co what coverage you what what coverage limitations you're comfortable with because yeah that's what that's what I don't know and maybe by. Talking, I think that's what you were getting at in this paragraph, but I read it a bunch of times and I don't understand the business about the parking spaces and the coverage. Well, from, from my part of it, when I, I was, we have other diagrams just to work through all these numbers, um, but if it was a full build out and if offices were allowed in that full build out of the proposed parking using that that full um, number for the institutional square footage and and using that so right so now office of that size isn't isn't um, isn't permitted for se the 70 what was the number the square footage of 2272 right um, but the uh, the full build out in terms of the um, the square footage of floor area that was presented in um, the AKRF <coughs> uh, zoning um, analysis back when they presented it at, at the at the village board. Um, I believe they had a a sort of worst case scenario full build out for institutional was seventy eight thousand right. square feet. So if right. that, I, I think that one hundred and fifty is for if that was a, a building, um, if that was a office use that's sort of the maximum that would be needed for that um, let, me, let me just look over the numbers a little bit but okay. I don't know if you have and, no, then, it's, it's and then the other question 
is what what's do you know what the gross floor area is now of, of, of the building you have? The uh, the, the office is about eleven thousand the single story commercial building. Imagine house about eighty eight hundred. So you have a total of under twenty thousand square feet right now? Uh, I believe that's the case, yes. And I would only add to what Susan was saying in that the FAR is accounting for, again, pervious services such as the parking. So that was where it, it, it goes yeah. back to the discussion that we had about FAR does mm -hmm. so the services. Well, I think the way the that it's coverage does. The coverage. Right. Well, excuse me, coverage, thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. The FAR I think was excluding right. any any parking structure. Um, but um, so the existing, just to let you know, the existing footprint of the buildings is 15,746. Um, and a lot of it is the one, one square Exactly, yeah. Okay. Thank you, just for that help. <coughs> one of my questions is on kind of, um, you know, Strawberry Lane is, is um, it's kind of a unique uh, part of the equation in this zone because it's a, a private road um, it's undersized um, it's kind of not owned by anyone and everyone that that's on there um, and it's kind of a handshake deal that I guess Abbott House kind of maintains it now um, for the most part um, what, what do, you, do you guys do you have thoughts on improvements I know I know you mentioned your letter but thoughts on improvements for Strawberry Lane um, is it possible to have you know kind of even if it's the entrance on Strawberry Lane and exit right. goes uh, directly out to Broadway, have you kind of looked at any of those? So, so I'm going to ask Dave to speak directly to the Strawberry Lane question, but I would just point out, as you're all very familiar, the goal is to not have any more curb cuts out to North Broadway. So that's, you know, working with the site constraints, that is part of the discussion, but I will ask Dave just to sort of uh, go through, um, you know, what, what is proposed and, and ultimately what could be done. Whose goal was no more curb cuts? Your goal, or do you see yeah. it as a village goal? It's in the proposed zoning code. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. It's we've been talking, sorry, just to clarify. Oh, okay. We've been talking about whether or not this particular property requires some kind of uh, adjusted access, let's put it that way, you know, a different you know, way that would take route some of the traffic off of Strawberry Lane. Okay. I, I think. Uh, Mark, one of the issues was trying to, um, and we haven't prepared uh, detailed uh, site plans for redevelopment of the site, but one of the goals, you know, as referenced in the comprehensive plan, is was trying to maintain the, um, the, the corridor and not have excessive number of curb cuts going out onto uh, Broadway. However, if the village uh, wants to include some language that would allow for some type of secondary access out onto Broadway, then certainly we need to have access to the property, whether it's off of Strawberry Lane or Broadway. And one point on that, too, is just that there were the existing use of the Maxim companies. It's an 80, it wasn't, you know, at times, it has varied based on how many employees, right. other, you know, res again, other users of their services that have come to the site. I mean, you also had Abbott House that was using this, sending buses, and it's not like this wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't used or it didn't have the, the, capa the capacity. We, we fully understand that that's something that is being considered for this particular site, um, but we just want to, you know, highlight that this has been a, a used road, and, and indeed there was points where the Maxon companies were also helping and sharing in that maintenance of, of Strawberry Lane, realizing, of course, the primary um, user or primary <laughs> maintainer was the uh, the Abbott House. Mark, the, the, the language in the proposed zoning is that new development shall utilize existing curb cuts and driveways to the greatest extent practicable. So that doesn't disallow. If it, it, it turns out from a traffic study or a routing study, you know, the, it's, that it's proposal is made that makes sense to take traffic off of uh, strawberry line, for instance. Yeah, I mean, and you can also also tweak that language too. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So and understanding that sounds like it's under the discretion of, of the planning board at that point in terms of mitigation. Yeah, but but if in fact you do want, if in fact you do want to um, allow want, yeah. for other yeah. curb cuts, then I think you should put language in there to that extent because the planning board only has the statutes in front of it, and it yeah. says you know. 
So you could, language could be added. I mean, I, I guess, you know, we all want to protect the walls along Broadway, especially on the east side. The mm -hmm. question I have is that, you know, we kind of have an immovable object in terms of how much traffic the Strawberry Lane can absorb. Um, and, you know, we get a lot of pushback. It's not even, the problem is not even so much getting in, it's getting out. That's the real problem. But uh, in terms of, uh, Right. And the other limitation just on Strawberry Lane and on Broadway is that you have this historic wall that is along both Broadway and Strawberry Lane, and that really minimizes the, you know, the, the character of Strawberry Lane is so lovely, you know, the small sort of narrowness of it, um, but that also makes it harder to improve it in any way that would help any of those traffic issues unless you remove the wall. Um, and then again, if you create a new curb cut in Broadway that also disturbs the wall, but on Broadway. So, you know, this, this is all the parameters that are really difficult to deal with on, yeah, on the site. the disturbance than the entire length of Strawberry Lane, so it just depends. Can you make an easement to the other property and have the excess, you know, go As long as the village wants to take it by eminent domain, absolutely. Eminent <laughs> 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 domain. Right, and to your point, Mark, before there was a mention of impervious surfaces, creating new driveways, new roadways, I mean, all re relates back to that same comment. So it's trying to maintain the existing community character, which was really a goal of the comprehensive plan in, in creating this district. So we, we appreciate those comments, and I think, as the, the attorney mentioned, we would certainly welcome language that accommodated other mechanisms that if traffic reporting at site plan level or otherwise identified, absolutely not, can't happen, you know, ramp to nowhere, <laughs> so to speak. Then, then that's when that happens. But here, you know, again, looking at the economic viability or, or redevelopment potential here to, to enliven, you know, create a, a better rateable use of the property that's, you know, putting back into the tax rolls, all of these considerations that are part of it, each one of these things all, you know, checks a different box on developer A. You know, developer A came in, saw the characteristics of it, you know, of the, the way that it was designed, look at these other projects that, that are in our, our letter, um, as David uh, presented, and it's it just, it, there's, there's too many constraints, so we are, really what we're here tonight, and, and as part of our submissions, is to hopefully create a little more, just some flexibility. It's something that could be done as a special permit. It's something that could be done, you know, giving this village, you know, the village board, it's, ability to modify as you're providing X screening or it's going to provide a certain number of jobs. All these things can translate into goals that further the comprehensive plan and the goals of the zoning code, but also achieve more, uh, equally as important, preserving the community character and preserving, you know, the right, and, and without impacting those on Strawberry Lane. I mean, just one thing that I'll shut up. Uh, <laughs> part of the goal of the reason. Rezoning, yes, exactly. Part of the goal of the rezoning was to actually eliminate, as far as I was concerned, and I think we discussed, eliminate the need for special permits and have sort of covered as of right or, you know, uh, allowable, whatever, as opposed to as of right, how you want, what the right language is within the code itself, right. rather than have each property become another special mm -hmm. case. So, so that that's an excellent point, and and one point that we've mentioned or didn't do it so in this exact in this specific letter, but I make reference to another community that's recently experienced the similar operation, need of rateables, looking for mechanisms to try and to, to monetize that with uses that are, again, desired by that municipality, and they enabled their village board to make some modifications or or, or be more flexible because again. The law is being enacted by this board. It's being reviewed, of course, on the community level. But it allows this board, as the village board who's enacting this legislation, to have those bits of flexibility. It's, it's still the applicant applying before you. It doesn't necessarily constitute a special permit. It just allows inherent flexibility to the village board to enable these types of modifications specific to sites. Because really, we all know that zoning can't all be applied. We, we do our best, to, or, or you all work the hardest, to do this and make this functional for all these sites that are, are characterized here. But none of these sites are like the other. And that goes back to our, you know, size does matter, but the planning is really what we're trying to do. So I think overall, we're, 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 we're just suggesting mechanisms, and we can provide a copy of that to the, the board, uh, just similar mechanisms that have been used, because seeing these sites, knowing what you want to propose on a site, can't necessarily always work within the confines of a box. And without avoiding, you know, avoiding, is, as, as you mentioned, sort of the special permit component, all we're otherwise doing is now requiring variances. And variances is a scary word to any developer 
versus the ability potentially to meet with the village board, express and to design a project that really reflects the comprehensive plan and the zoning code and may meet what you're looking for rather than going to the zoning board who may have other sort of understandings and flexibilities that is there because the code can't apply directly to every uh, lot. It just does the best that it can. It just can't apply, you know, really everywhere. Susan or Dave, I was just going to ask, um, in your drawing where where we were reducing the setback down to 200 mm -hmm. feet, um, the landscaping which you're showing there, is that existing landscaping or new landscaping? The darker ones, the ones that look like full-size trees, those are new. That would be okay. proposed. And would they be on the space where we now have open lawn? Um, part of it. Part of it, yes, but not because all of it. Because it's not only you know, hiding the view of the building mm -hmm. from the site, but it's also maintaining the appearance of the lawn. Right. And, and right now, because of the privet that's there, you don't see much of it except for from this view that you're looking at right now. And right. if you look at, you know, it, it's still that foreground. It's still open lawn. Right. Well, from that view, sir. From that view. Yeah. And all of the views are right now blocked by privet. So we should talk about it because yeah. even in the plans for Brightview, for instance, there was a lot of landscaping going into that area. It wasn't just open lawn. It would be more like mm -hmm. parkland right. rather than if there's some way that zoning code uh, could could uh, golf course. could direct the management of landscape, yes. that'd be lovely. You know, I don't know how that could happen, but to make it that that they have to maintain it in in a naturalistic way and without any any we're, we're you know, looking for right. we're looking for obviously for uh, full season full year of course uh, you know coverage. Mm -hmm. A building facade effectively from the street. Right. It's a you know it's a beard. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yep. I. Can we look at the um, a good beard. Aerial, <laughs> aerial, 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 aerial. Go back to the aerial view. Uh, I guess I don't know if that was the first one. Yeah. Okay. So just um, the comments about the the walls. Um, obviously the historic walls are. To me, uh, personally, very important. And of course, you see the ones on on Broadway. More people do, but I I understand and appreciate that Strawberry Lane also has those walls. So, being a total non-professional in this, when I was look, when I um, um, cavalierly said go out to the other property, uh, it doesn't look like there's a very big space. I mean, if you see that little parking lot in the at the back of the green space and then you see the the next property there's a little link there you mean right here. yeah exactly i mean is it i'm just i, I threw it out almost right. as a aside but the more i look at that i just I, I think if, if you if you did a theoretical design of these two to three properties there and i've thought about this as well It'd be wonderful if it was owned by one person and you could actually take that whole area and be okay. smart about the design. Unfortunately, that's just not the way the world right. works right I mean, now. But I, no, no, I totally okay. understand. All right, I would just say in the real world of there, I have two neighbors who share part of the driveway mm -hmm. and somehow they managed to work it out. Right. So okay, but it's, 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 it's a big, big deal. deal. It's okay. It, 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 it's but so if it easy. meant you couldn't develop it because the village does not want you to curb cut the historic wall, it might be an incentive. To no, do but it's a big deal for the one, the person next door. Well, I mean, no, you can yeah, I mean, I even. I said, how great for your name. I, I think it's true. <laughs> but the there are so yeah. many disputes over shared driveways. They don't always work, trust me. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's other components, there's liabilities. I have a question yeah. about go, when, when, when you, you had your sight line picture. Uh -huh. um, With the, the, the cut line there, the viewpoint A, or the next one? The yeah. 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 Did you, that block building in the second one, does that show the building at three stories at 250 feet? I believe it's at two stories, from from 212 to 232 or 235, you know, uh, uh, 25 feet. Because one of your other suggestions was to have have it be um, three stories. In, in the letter, that was one right. of the suggestions. Uh, but, but that shows two that stories. Is, I, I, oh, I believe it. Oh, and two stories, and that just skims the... 
what? site line, right? Um, depending on what you what you put in there in terms of planting, I, I put in relatively smaller trees um, that would get that that middle level of the site line there. Um, you know, there there could be more dense planting, but as you said, you know, it's not all about blocking the view, but it's also about keeping um, a little bit of lawn and and so the pastoral kind of character there. Um, but it's still very much, you know, while leaves are on, it's very much blocked, you know, even even without those. And again, part of what we're, again, we're, we haven't designed the building, we haven't done renderings, because, it, again, this is not, yeah. the, the owners are not the developers. We're, we're working, you know, sort of in, a, in, a, in a, a planning process, just as you are, to try and come up with effective solutions that will help incentivize these rateables that, we're, you know, we're trying to encourage through this rezoning. So what we're showing here, you know, again, it's showing a sight line, it's showing other potential mitigation measures, but not to poke eyes at our neighbors, but could be a much more beautiful building than, per se, the Make-A-Wish building. The things like that could be really consistent with the character of North Broadway could really help benefit that area versus an institutional-style building uh, in that location. So those those are all goals and parts of the planning review process that would be considered, all of these things factored in. We're just trying to work together a building design, too, that would also um, really bring those parties to the table to do this, uh, do these uses that are being considered for this district. And it's clear, not just from your presentation, but from correspondence we've gotten from uh, neighbors that <laughs> Strawberry Light Lane is a real challenge that just affects one part of this, and that's where you are, um, but there's, there, there are real challenges for how we're going to figure that out. Yep. And as Connie pointed out, the visual of, you know, other access onto North Berkeley mm -hmm. isn't easy to figure out how we're going to do that. Right. I don't have an answer here, just to <laughs> that. No, no, and we understand, and, and all of that will will come to light really in a planning process with both this board and the planning board. And so, again, we haven't designed the language necessarily for the benefit of your zoning code, but we're sort of we're recommending that there may be mechanisms that there is some inherent flexibility designed for this board to be able to relax certain standards that would either encourage, prevent, or otherwise, you know, allow some reworking of these well, dimensions. Well, deal with the reality of a pro where your building is and the private road and the interests and concerns of the people who live there right. and the width and right. the curb cuts and, and the store. But I, I just have to say that I mean, in, in the past, especially with things like special permits, I and mean, correct me, Marianne, if I'm wrong, generally the beyond the zoning, the uh, uh, adjustments, the village, the Board of Trustees really doesn't get involved. It's all well, it depends who issues the special permit. Yes. It, it, yeah. But generally, but, it's... But if, if it's a special permit that the planning board issues, yeah, you guys aren't going to be involved. But you would be... I, I don't think necessarily we're talking about special permit. I think you're talking about a kind of a special exception, some escape valve. That can be done by special permit, but there's other ways to do it. It's not, it's not like your typical special permit. It's really more like a special exception. If you, so if I may, no, you know what I mean? if I may jump on Marion's point, the vi the village board as a legislative body, if it were doing a special permit as distinct from a planning board, because you are a legislative body, you have different levels of review authority when it would come to an application. A planning board has to apply certain standards that you create, whereas you, as the creators of that, <laughs> have it, it just it's the nature of the case law. It's it gives you more power. You are the the the. the the, the power legislative body. I, I, and I need not make that up. That's we had to use okay, those case law. Yeah. yeah. So that's all we're we're just we're just referencing it as a design mechanism yeah. that, that plays. But thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. <laughs> but, but one thing you said that I uh, was thinking about. Um, it's there's obviously a difference between an institutionally looking building mm -hmm. and an interesting. Um, architectural creation and you see the top of something that's interesting and varied and um, you know how do you describe pleasing I know, but, <laughs> I know but I think you know that's that's a kind of flexibility that mm -hmm. seems important to keep the character of the village in mind everything was not squat in you know the 19th century there mm -hmm. were interesting taller things that were um, pleasant, shall I say. <laughs> so I just appreciate that comment and the idea of flexibility on things like that. On the other hand, we don't necessarily want to have faux 19th century. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we went through that. <laughs> I think there's some interesting 
little bit taller buildings that are built today as yeah, well. Right, right. It's just a question of how to, right. for you guys, how to incentivize good design and not just yeah, filling it out. Yeah, you know. yeah and by design, right. which I that's very good. Right. No, I, I, yes, I was using the 19th century as a comparison. Yeah. But, you know, again, when, when we talked about what goes with what, like the example is always the loop and the glass <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, can be yeah, interesting yeah. and some can be very modern mm -hmm. and some can be um, very old and they can go together very nicely. Some days well, this is like that at first. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I've gotten used to it. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, I, I, I think I'd like yeah. to uh, take this time to, to thank you all yes. for your thoughtful submission. Yeah. Um, it's great to finally meet some room talks. You almost met us. You almost met us, yeah. Um, uh, thank you guys for coming as well. Um, yeah, I think we've been, obviously, this, this public hearing's been open for a long time, Absolutely. so we'll stay in the beginning by design, obviously. We didn't forget. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, you know, we've been fairly successful in getting resident uh, input, but we, where we haven't got a lot is the actual property owner. So we we really hope we really hope, we, we really hope that you know your 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 neighbors will also kind of chime in. Uh, but to me, this is very helpful, and, and you know, a lot of constructive things to, to right. work on now is we have to take all of the input we've received and try to come back with another you know iteration of the, on the local law, and then start the process of the the public hearings again, but I think that's, I mean, this is an important piece of legislation. Right. Um, it's probably the most important one we'll have for the foreseeable future, so we want to get it as right as possible. Good, um, good thing about legislation is you can always tweak it as you go, right. um, but, um, you know, this is, the, you know, your submission and your presentation uh, are, are appreciated, and, right. and, you know, it's, it was obviously thoughtful, and you had, you know, a lot of, a lot of talented people working on it, so we do appreciate that. We appreciate that, and again, all of your time tonight, and we look forward to seeing you on Monday. And again, our consultants are, and of course, the property owners will absolutely make themselves available to your consultants, and of course, all of you for uh, further discussions, especially if there's the tweaking that can, can lead to a, a design. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's, 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 I made you guys a little bit. I know you like the dishes, so you know how far along we are. Uh, <laughs> or not. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I think we can actually summarize the outstanding issues. They, you know, some of them raised tonight, some of them raised. Um, Another thing I've been to you guys. Should I just go with the one I said? Oh, I connected to one of the two. Anyway, I, div I divided. I divided. I'm sorry, am I missing? No, we're good. Mark that okay. too. I yeah, divided it into to, to, to three sections: um, uses, area requirements, and other issues. And, and some of some of the things would be very easy, and uh, some you may say you want to come back to. But the first question on uses is whether we might want to expand the assisted living to include independent living. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, certainly with, we're, we're thinking of assisted living because Brightview's proposal was only assisted living, but um, the continuum project, the first one we had, was, did have independent living, so you've got a continuum of care there, and I think I think it makes sense. Maybe maybe the development won't chance, so if everybody agrees with that, I think we could ex expand. It, the, 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 the assisted living to include independent living. So reminding me, assisted living um, has no kitchens or right. independent living does. Yes, it's an independent apartment. It's an apartment, but yeah. they can use the dining rooms right. and the facilities right. and the things. The building is going to have less units if it has independent living. Yeah, right, because, because they are because they're bigger. bigger. Right, they're bigger. So Not that we have to come up with the numbers, but they're limited by whatever uh, right. uh, war. war right. area. We're already they're asking limited. for more numbers than we have. And well, that particular, that particular that proposal, but right. no, no, it'll be more flexibility to it may well be that that property isn't big enough to have a, an, 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 an assisted living so. facility at the time that they want, but there are other properties in the district that are. So do we... This just triggers. Where do we come down on? Because I didn't see it listed there explicit, explicitly. But where do we come down on the size, of number of units, you know, per usage? Was it no, yeah, there was an answer in there, but it's really kind of irrelevant because because what 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 dictates 
the it's number of units you can yeah. ha have is the size of the building. And, and, and so what you would do, let's say the biggest building you could have is 50,000 square feet and the average size of the unit is, a, you know, the unit plus the common area that they use is 1,000 square feet, then they can have 50 units. Because it doesn't make sense to come up what, what you, you you don't care, frankly, if there are 100 units in there, right? I mean, it's it's the size of the building. Uh, I do if it's in the yeah. There are more people coming to show it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. But if it's if it's assisted, probably not. Yeah. Just more garbage, more food, and more garbage. So I don't. I mean, I think I think that makes sense. I think it's it's a model for a lot of the people. You know, people shorthand with assisted living, but it's usually the whole continuum. Yeah. So we could draft that. The letter that we just got was talking about certain constraints based on four acres and some some other uh, assisted living facilities. Let's get to area later. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about area land. Let's just talk about uses now. Okay. Um, one of the suggestions in the Maxon letter was a conference center or spa. Um, well, it's kind of like, in some ways, the boutique hotel. I mean, it's some of the same kinds of things that, you know, a boutique hotel might have a spa and might have, you know, some, some rooms where people have conference rooms within a hotel. So it doesn't seem like a big leap. Yeah, I think, I think it's very similar. Are we okay with that? Okay. I think yeah, it comes down to traffic. If it's, that's, you know, if it's, a, if it's, like a, if it's a Javits Center where it's, yeah. you know, yeah, it's <laughs> well, going to be a lot of traffic. But they're going to have to meet the special permit traffic requirements. Right, and again, on every one of these uses, is going to fit on every one of the properties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So one of the arguments from the Strawberry Lane folks that I remember uh, from their recent uh, discussion, the recent uh, mail-in, um, oh, yeah. was trying, was, they were kind of against uses that would actually have nighttime uses effectively, you know, so sort of more nine to five type uses. Now, the conference center, to my mind, is mainly used during the day with overnight stays, and that's kind of a little bit of a hybrid. Um, I don't know what a, a spa is, <laughs> but um, the, the, night, uh, yeah. the good ones are the good ones. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which Which one? Which one? Which one? Which yeah, I, mean, I think this is more of the general question about how seriously do we need to discuss the notion of limiting it to just effectively just off issues versus anything that would have nighttime use. Because that's one of the arguments about traffic on Strawberry Lane. They're used to it at the morning and evening rush hour, but they don't want to see it any other time. I'm paraphrasing, making an assumption. I do, I do think conference um, centers are different than, say, pure restaurants, because restaurants, you know, probably are busiest from, you know, 7 to 10, where a conference center, I think, is typically, it's, you know, 8 to 4, or, you know, 8 to 7, maybe, so I think it's, right. I, mean, I, I think... Plus, they don't, I tell you, for years, my office was next door to the Perrytown house. Yeah. You saw so little traffic from there. Right. Also, for a conference, if it's a conference center, most by definition, people are going to be coming and leaving All together at, at you know the yeah. beginning and end of the day. It'll be more like an office yeah. building yeah. in terms I of think I, think so. I agree. And You're in right. terms of the impact on the neighbors. So, yeah. I mean, I saw some notice that they added a spa into that um, Terrytown house. There was some advertisement for we're opening up a spa in Terrytown House. I didn't know if anybody noticed any more traffic in the area. Also I never went there, but there's a restaurant there. there. Yeah, there's two now. Yeah. There are. Okay. The guy that used to do Mr. Pierce, right, is now uh, sous chef or whatever. Set up that oh, is he up there? Can you smell them? Oh, okay. Um, how about an embassy? That would be um, both residential and office, like a combination of residential and office. Yeah, generally, yeah. So, yeah, so I think I that's think that'd be a very good idea. I think it'd be almost, you know, 
It's almost like a fancy residence, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that, um, okay. That's um, it's um, intensity is. Yeah, all right. Exactly. On the, 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 the camp on boutique hotels, I think the board, the board had agreed to 50, mm -hmm. but then Brian, I don't know. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. Are you comfortable with the net 50? But, well, this, um, but this raises like the, the, one of the issues about Strawberry Lane in particular. It, it seems to me from the from the, this presentation tonight and the other things we, we've been considering, uses we've been considering, that's something that might be just fine on one of the other properties, that one of the other parcels that has access to North Broadway might not be so fine. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if the access is to Strawberry Lane. And I don't know how we can reflect that. Well, you could. You can make it a condition of a use that it has to have access on Broadway. So you can say okay. a hotel and then one of, or whatever use it is, a hotel, and one of the requirements would be a, a hotel provided if he has an access, like we did for, for um, bed and breakfast. Okay, so I would say, for, but only like if, I would say hotels, hotels, restaurants. As a valve. So, so hotels, but you say that they have, they have to be on Broadway? Yeah, they have, have access Broadway. on Broadway. <laughs> restaurants have, have access on Broadway. Well, they, then it's not, and if they only have access on Broadway, maybe they can work something out. But OK, um, what, now what, but what about the cap? Are you comfortable with I, I, I don't remember the part. For what it's worth, the, 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 the proposal right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I think we had all yeah. agreed to take it yeah. down. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. Yeah. Fine. But is that number okay? It doesn't okay? seem like a boutique to me, but that's just my opinion. I see a boutique yeah, as my boutique is 10. <laughs> well, right. like, the, for instance, the castle in Terrytown, I call it, they have 31 rooms. Oh. Um, one of these letters did a whole analysis of these, right? Well, that well, was different from Sills. Yeah, I'm Susan. I don't know what to do that. Um, 50 to 60 is high. No, it's about 35. Okay. Actually, you're done. 50 to 60 is high. Well, no. It's going to be limited. It's going to be limited, but, yes, the building's going to be limited, but, but um, I suppose it could have really little room. You know, it could have really little room. Well, even yeah, in the room. The size of the building. Yeah. 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 So they're also putting in a spa and a conference center. They're not going to fit 50 rooms. So I think it's a, depending on the use that they're envisioning. Do you want to move to 50? Mm -hmm. I think that gives us more flexibility. It doesn't require us to approve. I think that, that is that another thing that requires the Broadway access? You know, a hotel that's got a lot of traffic. Yeah, we said that. So this has to be access on Broadway. Yeah, we're still on. No, we're still on hotel. Yeah, no, we ain't get rid of this restaurant. We're still on hotel. Um, so you take a drop poll. How many say leave it at fifty? I would say leave it at fifty. Access on Broadway. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll do the access on Broadway. We're good. Okay. How does anybody feel about restaurants? Access on Broadway. I thought that was a very good point that the um, Strawberry Lane residents made. You know. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure about limiting access to Broadway. I can think of lots of restaurants where you take a little windy road before you get to it, and it does go to residential and it turns into woods. And again, you don't want to limit our attention on that. Right. Um, I'm not sure I want to restrict Broadway access. I, I would come down with the residents on this one because they were also concerned about use of that made with into the evening, late nights. How about a lunch, a lunch restaurant that closes at night? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I. Well, we want something like a convention center to be able to have a restaurant facility in it, right? Well, yeah. yeah I mean, that's. I mean, it would, would it be, be different? different? Yeah. But this is a standalone. Well, but you know what, though? Sometimes for Terrytown Conference House in the, in the center is a good idea. They have a restaurant that's part of them. You can also just come to the restaurant. Oh, two right? restaurants to yeah. have, too. Yeah. yeah. So. If it's good enough restaurant, people can come to it. If it's really expensive. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to limit the uses for all the property owners by by, by putting stringent you know requirements on certain uses. 
So what, how do we address the, the um, just, I'm not disagreeing, I'm just wondering how we address Strawberry Lane. I think uh, we residents. recognize that they have desires, you know, as do the property owners, and we try to find the balance and what's best. My concern is that, you know, Strawberry Lane is already substandard and dangerous, so we're piling on top of that situation. Well, but, but but to get approval, they're going to have to make sure that there's not a substantial change in the usage of the road or the road is going to need to be improved in some way. Yeah, I think we're going to have to have something with the required. If you can have some of that language in there, then I'm fine. Well, I mean, well we're going to get to that. Because the very last you think about this, I mean, the restaurants are, you could have a six table restaurant that's, you know, three star Michelin, yeah, you know, right. and there'd be no impact. You know, yeah. it's, it's. You could have a 50 table restaurant that has five people in it. <laughs> it won't be there long. So is there, is there, uh, but you know what, the thing about, about um, um, fixing up Strawberry Lane, I think has to be, no matter what the use is, I think you're going to probably have to require that. That's the question I meant, and this is so we're going to get back to that. That's at the end of this, and it's okay. very difficult. All right. Well, this is one for I'm, Connie and, and other folks who are thinking about things. And, uh, in depth on the, on the historical impact. Is it like a faux pas to, to allow the wall to be moved back? In other words, can you deconstruct the wall and reconstruct it three feet into the property? I thought of the same thing. I mean, does that, does that eliminate the historic nature of the wall, or are you just trying to basically Keep the look. I mean, there's a lot of places where they move, you know, oh, buildings, right. temples out of a flood yes. zone and put them up on the hill, and they're still there and right. considered to be the temple, right? So, I'm not yeah. saying the, the, the stone walls are. I, temples, I, I thought about, and I, I just, I thought it was, you know, extremely difficult and expensive, and I just didn't know, you know, well, that's who would bear the, if it were if it well, were the municipality be, that bore the expense. It no, would it would be, have to be the property developer. Yeah, right. Then that's different. <laughs> I don't know how expensive it yeah. actually is yeah. to build a stone wall if you got the material there already. So you use the same. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's it's still labor intensive, yeah. but yeah. I'm not saying that it's it's it, it's part of the whole equation of what we're talking about yeah. here. You're talking about zoning that we're trying to obviously meet our own municipal needs for it, but you're also unlocking a certain amount of value as a result of it. So for the for the existing owners, not that we're doing it for that reason, but it's a it's a byproduct of what's going on here. So if there is a cost that comes along with the unlocking of that value, then so be it. Right. And that part of it's always and that part of the discussion is as Marianne mentioned is relating to Strawberry Lane, particularly if it, for this property and these properties, is a much more difficult conversation. So, I mean, it, that, the solutions are much more difficult. To, so. to go back to that, I mean, we do a straw poll in the restaurants, too. I mean, to me, oh, sorry, straw poll, to go back to the restaurants. I, yeah. Um, you know, to me, I, I think that, uh, I think that the, the overriding um, kind of uh, issue that they always have to, you know, work on the traffic impacts that kind of overrides or kind of oversees all of these developments. I think that that's a big part of it. Because I mean, restaurants are such a, you know, such a wide range of, of traffic of inputs or results. You know, how many turns they're going to have, like what kind of restaurant. I mean, there's so many variables that I think that it's, um, you know, to me, I'd rather just have that be figured out when we had we got to a plan and not just eliminate the specific. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so everybody wants to leave restaurants in. Okay, how about, so, how many want to limit it to just Broadway? I'd say leave it on, on Strawberry. So I mean, can, can we, do we need to say anything that says that we would, that we envision, or we would not be, look negatively upon moving the wall, or do we just not? Well, not as part of the restaurant thing, but we could get to, you know, I mean, could. In terms of down by, yeah, and Strawberry. I, I think maybe before you want to include something like that, you might want to talk. You might want to talk to people who are, like you said, you know, open open. Yeah. Because you don't want to do that and then have your whole historic committee come and say, what are you doing? What are you letting you move the wall? You know? Maybe, so just, I think maybe just asking John Malone, who we know pretty well, might have some perspective on that. Can you, can you uh, do that, Tom? Or Marianne. But he and Marianne talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> back then, so. Yeah, I don't think you know right now.
he's not watching that. Right, so Just the same issue, just in passing, the same issue has come up actually in terms of trying to get enough room on, on Route 9 for how the sidewalks are. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can't take a picture of that wall. Is it a rubble wall or is it a, a oh, it's circle yeah. It's a well, it's not a, it's, it's a Bedford wall or a Greenwich wall. Our Bedford walls have no mortar. Greenwich walls have mortar. They have mortar. They have mortar. <laughs> no, and actually in Bedford you're not allowed to have walls with mortar. That's a Greenwich wall. You can't have mortar in the rear? What? You can't have mortar in the rear? For like, never mind. <laughs> can, can I just ask something about restaurants? If you. Assuming that's Greenwich wall. It's confirmed. It's got more. Oh yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a Greenwich wall. Assuming a, a restaurant changes hands, I mean, if I don't know how you put into the zoning. I mean, a restaurant that can create a lot more problems on Strawberry Lane than another one that didn't. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a problem. So it's, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm thinking of a price that there are all kinds of restaurants, and so you say, okay, we well, have this, and then it turns it over, and it's now it's this instead. Yeah. So, I, mean, I don't know, it's more complicated than just It is, because yeah. you could have somebody, yeah. you know, come in, I don't want to name a restaurant yeah. that is, you know, very tony yeah. and, and, and and it doesn't do well, so somebody yeah, else comes in. It's not like everybody. You know? And yeah, that's the problem. Seems to review the, I mean, it's not a special permit now, so. No, but, and also, you can't, it, it has to, I mean, and once it's permitted, it's permitted, I don't know. Because if there's a restaurant, I think the, the way it would work now with the building department, one restaurant moves out, another restaurant moves in, you don't do another study to see Right. How what the traffic impacts are going right. to be at this other restaurant. Can you limit the number of tables or, you know, something like that? That you could. Okay. Well, right. But, but, it, but that's, that's so different. Yeah. Turnover. Yes. Right. 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 So right. if you're right. having a four course, you know, that'd be right. dinner, um, and that restaurant goes yeah. under, and now you're talking about a more quick right. turnover. Right. Yeah. I'm, I don't I'm, know. I'm, for me, the concerns. Outweigh the, the potential, the concerns for Strawberry Lane, what could happen, are way heavier for me in the balance. And I agree with that, that all of this is a balance. I would be inclined to keep um, restaurants with uh, roadway access. I, I think I'd still keep it, but I, the conversation has to go further to look at ways to um, have constraints on this. And if they're not there, then I'd probably change my mind. But like what kind of well, I, I don't know things about the both the, the number of tables or the um, I don't know which kinds of things. You no, can, but, but like like Gianna yeah, said, it's but, not the, not, the number of tables doesn't well, come in. McDonald's typically does yeah. not have 100 tables. They only have a few. But people come and go. I don't know. I don't know what you can regulate in terms of restaurants and what you do. I mean, are there are there um, other municipalities that describe what kinds of restaurants can go in different places? I've, ne I've never, never seen, seen that. that. I mean, uh, as far as any limitations at restaurants, I think that every team kind of goes this far as I've seen. <laughs> and, we, and we don't know what kind of um, improvements might happen on Strawberry Lane and how far up on Strawberry Lane would it go? I mean, how long is Strawberry Lane? And, could the access have to be near the bottom of Strawberry Lane, right, as opposed all, to way up? <laughs> those are all questions. So I, I, that's why I don't want to, I, I, just to totally cut it off and say we know already. What, all right, so maybe it's something we have to come back to? I mean, I don't know. Larry, you, you still have some desire to keep that as an open question for the restaurant access? 
Yeah, that's the question. Or whether we have restaurant. No, I think the restaurant has the access on Strawberry Lake. Yes, the access. Okay. Um, and then the last question I use is this detached single family homes. Right now, they're not allowed. That was agreement, but Brian seemed, Brian wanted to discuss it again, whether there's detached single family homes. I really prefer a court, you know, attached. Even this, this was a lot, not yet. Yeah. I mean, the problem is we were, the example that we saw that was given to us on the Carfriello property just couldn't be made to work for it. You know, the, the, uh, to me, the visual and environmental impacts of that was pretty extreme. Now, maybe yeah. they just... It is a little bit different now, and then we've got minimum lot sizes of um, two acres, so the houses would have to be on two acres, but... but How do you cluster that if you wanted to? Yeah. No, no, under the proposed zoning. Oh, on the, oh, on there. The proposed Sorry, zoning yeah. is okay. 80,000. Oh, so, so, so explain to me the, the, the difference between the, the old problem when we saw those houses with the cavernous and the luge. And, yeah, right, with the luge. And, and what would happen because of the two, you just said because of the two acre. So they, <laughs> if you wanted to develop their property, there'd just be, it still has a luge track, there'd just be fewer houses on it. And you know what, my guess is it's, my guess is it's not, good. it's re financially yeah, it's just not realistic. Right, I mean, but to me, but on some of the other, like to me on some of the other properties, it's, it's possible in the zone, like that, if we could, if like the, the house that's the, the, the building that looks like an old house to me, like a girls' school a long yeah. time ago. Right. If that burned down, you want to have yeah, yeah, someone could build a house there. Like to me, to, to not have you know, build a single family home there doesn't. Well, wait, I don't think. Is it, is it yeah. two acres? No. I think it's just one acre. They couldn't. If it burned down, they couldn't put it stuff with what they have. Um, and to me, you know, almost every resident I've spoken to that lives anywhere in that area says, I want them, I, I, my favorite use of all that property would just be single family homes. And for us to say that, you know, we don't want that at all because one, I honestly think that they, when they did that subdivision plan, they said, I'm gonna give you this, I wanna pay the least amount of, you know, do, take the least amount of time, because uh, I don't wanna do this, I just wanna grandfather in the right to have the subdivided. And I'm never going to develop it, but I want to be able to sell it. So just do it. You know, if you can do it in an hour, do it. Um, so I don't think that that was the best subdivision plan possible. Um, and the way it came out looks like it was done in as quickly and cheaply as possible. Um, you know, so to me, I think if you went to a high-end, you know, property developer for the Carfiel property and said, "I'm going to build three homes there," I think you have a very different look than just the, the crazy, you know, loose driveway myself. Um, and you know, I think talking to the people at 140 or 120, I always get that wrong. Whatever the one is just north. 120. 120. Um, they were unanimous. Of them. I think I spoke to there's about a dozen of them. They all said, they all said, I, I can't believe that you're, you know, eliminating the one thing that we actually think is the one good use for the property closest to us. So I said, you know, I'll, I'll bring it up again. And I said, Doss, the reason we didn't like it was because of the subdivision plan we saw. Um, that basically ruined the entire aesthetic look of, of that whole entryway to, um, yeah, and they said, yeah, but you say if someone wanted to build two houses in the back and they're spread apart, you know, like, would that look horrible? I'm like, I don't know, you know, but it's, so I think that eliminating altogether, you know, and, and I think if I was a property owner, if I owned the Carapillo property and you now said, you can't build the tax single family homes, to me that is potentially used for someone that wanted to buy and develop it, that, is now gone. Yes, we're making a lot of other uses, but that one kind of most common use in Irvington. Okay, but here's the problem. It, with today's tax structure and everything, I mean, you know, there's problems with even having 280,000, uh, 280,000, whatever, 2.8 uh, 
million dollar house in order there, 2.5 million on Merker Ridge, weren't going. No one was buying them. And so it was looking, it was being looked at to be converted to your condos. So there's a certain size limit anyway. Those are attached. So Well, I, mean, I know, but I mean, you're talking about this, there's a certain, the market for housing above, you know, Two million dollars is very difficult right now. Right now. But you know what, Mark? I mean, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose if it, if if the market if if, it, if it's not economically feasible, nobody's going to do it. What I was trying to say is so, yeah. that if we're you know, the other result is that you don't build bigger houses, you build more smaller houses. So, you know, the, the idea of building just two large houses up on the on the hillside is probably not viable either. It's going to be more like but, but, but do we have to make that decision about viability? I, I mean, I, I, no, 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 no. I'm just talking from a planning perspective. You know, like, but I understand the argument about why would we exclude this when there might be a plan that, that is attractive and adds to the tax base and doesn't overwhelm what a number of kids in the school. But I, I prefer um, smaller housing, more housing that would be more easily accommodate affordable units. And if we were going to permit um, larger single family houses, I think we have to build in some way of um, incentivizing. Incentivizing. <laughs> but, um, you know, making sure that there's some way to capture some um, increased ability to put in affordable. I guess that's. I, I think I agree with you totally on that. I think the notion you know of tonight, you and I have agreed with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I would like the minutes to reflect. <laughs> you guys want to stay closer together? Uh, I, I, I just really would be. I, I don't know that it's to anyone's benefit to have a couple of big, you know, boat mansions built up there, and that's it. That purpose, per, I mean, personally, I don't either. I got that. I'm not a big fan of you know residential housing. You know, I'm tired of seeing every single lot has to be the built to the absolute biggest. You know, it's oh, it's in a little bit more. But when you have a but, four million dollar underlying value of the yeah, property, of course that's all. And you can only build three houses now because yeah. it's two acre zoning. That's what I'm trying. Then why even bother? Just, you know, it's it's kind of an empty. It's kind of an empty proposal. Right. So saying we're leaving the option open, but realistically, the chances of anything viable being proposed. Because like those houses that they built in Tarrytown, they sold three of them. For one was ten million, one was six million, and then one was four. There's only so you know. many players on the New York Knicks, you know. Yeah, exactly. But it's like you know, <laughs> but it's, to me, it's you know, if, if someone said, sure. well, you can't build houses there, and and how many big small offices are being built now? I mean, that's the other thing. Like that doesn't seem to be you know, yeah. with the WeWorks in the world and everything else, kind of is taking up. You know, the, it's like it's to me saying like you know, to me that's why. If it's if no one's ever going to do it, then why don't we just leave it in? And what are we afraid of then too? It's like if to me again, everything comes down to it. Someone with a, a vision and a plan, and now we're getting rid of the one thing that you know, they could have kind of built there as a right. Uh, I'm not opposed to leaving leaving it in as a permitted use, knowing that you know we would have to conform to all of these other requirements. We would have to it would have to be something that didn't look like the one that we, that we were presented with, and the unlikeliness unlikelihood of that it would really be a viable use. But I'm not opposed to leaving it in as potential. As well, you said, there's always somebody with a with a vision and a plan, but they have to include some trade off for affordability. And a canal. So. No, um, but there wouldn't be because, because they're not five. Because they're not over, it's not five. There's right. nothing over there we, where you could have five. But can we put a requirement to yeah, make a payment requirement. to an affordable housing fund? Expand, you know, extend. What, what How do you differentiate that from every other single family house that's going up in the village? So how do you allow a single? It, it, it would have to apply. Flat you everything. can't. Flat everything. Yeah, it has just, to be village wide. I, I don't. I don't think you could import and uh, impose an affordable housing requirement just on one district. How, how does the two acre that is written in here? To what uses does that actually apply? It doesn't apply to. There's only to, there's only attached housing in here, right? There's no single family housing. Well, I, she says except for that, except know, uses that provide otherwise, and I but, think well, it, it doesn't. It wouldn't include um, assisted living because those have to be on four acres. Right. I think offices. I don't think it says unless. Uh, yeah, it, it has to be two acres except for a. Assisted living, which you have to be on four acres, 
or what shelters you have to be in, four acres. Um, oh, but do you have to sit on four acres? Yeah. Those are the other ones. Right, but um, in, but in terms of residential, the only residential use is is uh, attached one family and then and three and more family. Well. Multi-family, right? Yeah. Well, if the question is just allowing a single-family home on that one property, I mean, if that's not, I, I know that's not. There's two. It came at it from both ways. There's the people at 120 that are saying, you know, our preference would be to have some another small building, more like a home, if that building was ever to burn down. So, but then you were saying, Marianne, that it's it's, it's small. too small of a lot to build something on it. To build our facility. Yeah, I have, you know, yeah, it is. It's only one acre. I mean, I have to. I, I would have to think. Well, yeah, but right now, I think I, my my guess is that that's a single family house there, right? It's just been converted to office. I, I, you know what? I don't know what the CFO for it is. But the CFO could be a single family house and then another single. I mean, you have certain rights, grandfather, they make it burns down. Well, that's I guess what I'm getting. Yeah, well, I don't know without. I mean, they could build it back up on the same out. footprint. Yeah. Which, but which property are we talking about? The, the one that looks like the old the one, school. Yeah, the other one, the one between the Care property and the right. Oh, oh, okay. That's the one everyone overlooks, except it's there. Yeah. Um, and the other one, the other one is from those uh, Strawberry Lane folks who said they prefer to see single family homes along the other side of Strawberry Lane. So that would be the Maxon and the uh, Abbott House properties. Yeah. And I think, again, I think it's the, the traffic impacts are less because if you have uh, you know, three homes and you're going to have maybe six cars that belong there. Right? It, it so, just seems like if you're going to seriously consider single family homes that, that you should stick with the one acre zoning that's in place. If you know what I mean? Because yeah, the two acre zoning is completely useless. Well, then you go to the one acre zoning and you're back to, back to the five yeah, little houses. The, the, the loose no, yeah. Well, no, but that was that was done as contemplating half acre zoning. Because yeah. they were trying to get it. They wanted a grandfather to half acre it in. before oh, it got up so old one. Right. Oh. So you haven't seen a one acre plan for that property. Not that that's going to drive everything here, but. Um, <laughs> That was half, that Let's was done see. to grandfather and then for the half but, acre. But right? it's, 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 eight, it's, it's, it's eight acres. Um, and let's say how much of it is there's there's a pretty big deductions because of the steep slopes, but not huge. Mm -hmm. say it's 20%. So let's say let's say you got down to let's say you got down to six, which is very generous. Then you could have six houses. Which isn't much different. Oh, we have to, and you have would have to take out some for the roads. For the roads and all that. And yeah. so you still going to have five. It's not going to. But you would have that uh, 250 foot setback off of Broadway. Well, it does. It does complicate it for that then, because if you've got one acre zoning and and you, you have, have the setback of that. Those lots on Broadway, you can't, you know, so then you can only build like the little one. Still <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just pointing out that if you do single-family homes on an eight-acre lot with the deductions and it's two-acre zoning, you probably have two houses. I'd be generous. You probably have two houses, which will never get built because the property, the land value, at least the recent sale, was three and a half, four million, right? Right. So what are you, so you're saying if it were smaller and you could have three houses or four houses, then it would five, be a five. viable. Well, I'm, I'm, I think, said, I think we said five as an example, but I, I you know. So you could this. look, <laughs> if everyone's afraid of the lose track, then the, the single family home suggestion is going to go down in flames here and that's fine. But don't do single family homes on two acres. It's that's a that's a, that's that's a waste of time. Yeah. So the loose track that part of it was siding and part of it was the clustering now, wasn't it? I mean it was No, they didn't ever do any real cluster. I thought that's what they, they were trying to do. I think, to, I think to Brian's point they didn't do any real planning. Like, you know, they they, they, they came in with one proposal they grandfathered themselves. and they that's said the cluster and it wasn't clustered. It wasn't okay. real. Right. So why what what is the objection? Maybe I haven't read the carefully enough from the neighbors. 
if it's not it, but it's a detach it's it's not detached it's the what what do we call it attached so why do they object to that no. i mean the 120 no I, th I think they say well you know that is allowed right they said that's fine but why not just allow it detached as well um I think that's so it. and and the other one is a three family that's three more three more multi-family multi right multi-family no they're not that's, against that they're, they're just saying, they're saying, they're just saying just, and don't get rid of the other one because then they're saying okay so you're going to allow a multi-family that could have say i don't know how many units it would be um say 40 units or whatever it is so now you have 80 cars where if you have six homes it's 12 cars you know like and it's less people less school and cars, you can have more than 12 cars maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> cars. Cars. <laughs> but no one drives um you know so i think that that's the thing it's like there's less traffic if you have less homes and less people and but but to janice's point there there and, and marks and all of ours they are they're not quote affordable but they are more affordable if they are attached and more units well, well, they, they, they tend to be more affordable. Yeah, but the other thing yeah. was, yeah. remember the other, <laughs> <laughs> remember the other goal, there were two goals here. Yeah. One was, was to pr preserve that open look on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was to have the zoning reflect what's there. Right. right. There's not one right. single yes. family yes. house in there, yes. except right. arguably, the, the, the house next to Care Field used to be part of that. And which was school. Well, and I guess at one point Max on was a single family, you know, a single family house way back to Nashville. But um, so neither of those I'm just pointing out that these are those goals as a cheap. What is that one property? What is it zoned as now? Which one? The little dangle you're talking about. Oh, you know what? It's really very confusing because it was part of a big variance that was granted to both the Carafiella property and that property, and it was for um, office use. Office and that, yeah. That's what it's been for since the 70s, I think. Right? Well, what the, what's the downside of adding it as a permitted use? That it changes back to one. Well, what's the downside? What, what, no, what? The downside is you could you you could you have, have a loose track. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, you, could, you could have the loose the, the loose track proposal. Be, yeah. Which which actually just remind everybody was part of it started this whole thing. Yes, because that was what. what because then we yeah. said come up with some other use that can yes. be able to right. come up with these right. of living yeah. and. Well, I think we should keep our original goals in mind. I'm glad you reminded us of that. Um, right. So, Janice, when you when you ask, what is this? What's the downside? The downside is that you're not accomplishing the goals of the, the goals comprehensive, the, plan. Of our right. comprehensive right. plan, which was entirely different, right. Right. as you were beginning to say. Right. Now, if that you know, again, you can decide something different or not, but that's I think, that's an answer. I think question. by explaining that to maybe the people who were looking for that might make some sense, but um, was that property on the is a property that's. That, uh, whatever the, the number of it is, uh, 103, what is it? 106. 106? Is that property something that can be somehow addressed to allow it to have a single family home? I mean, it would not be then in this zoning district any longer. That's what I was saying. What was the, what's the current underlying zoning for that property? Yeah, I think that would be a little bit. What's the current underlying zoning is the, uh, the, our, our fort. Do we have to change that property? No, but but the only thing is, is yeah, no, you could. I mean, just it's like business. it's just this yeah. kind of One you know parcel. because yeah. you can't change it to the zoning that's next to it. So it's it's family. Family, right? And then um, it's island. We have any communication? Yeah, well, you yeah. I'm sorry, of the owners of that property. No. Uh, yeah. What were you going to say about it? No, then you've got this, this prop, you've got these two like little gaps in it because I think we already, originally the, the house, the property that the Ravies owned, the floor in that too, but 
we took, we took that out because it made no sense right. to be right. Right. And, so on. and her suggestion was to make it back to R20, which is what the zoning is across the street. It's just kind of weird to have an R40 right now. Yes. An R40 for that one house. I suppose you could do it, though. You could not include it in your, your rezoning. Well, I'm just... I'm just trying to see. But then you're also not accomplishing what you wanted there too, because then the zoning, the zoning isn't reflecting the use that's there. Right. Yeah, that's that's an argument. I, I'm I'm happy to not put detached fam single family homes in. I I think we can um, explain that there aren't any there, and. There are across the street, and there are multifamily here, and there. Our goal was then more consistent with the overall vision of the comprehensive planning process, which was not to put more single family homes there. I agree. Okay. 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 Clustering as single family homes, <laughs> you get something I think potentially better than detached single family homes, but. I don't know. We'll move, just to move forward. We'll, move well yeah, but then you've got you, you've got attached attached single family. It was three. It was three okay. One, sorry, four, one. Okay. On, <laughs> on, the, on the area requirements. Now, just to remind everybody, the limits that the board has agreed on that were, were the building coverage of twenty percent, the lot coverage of thirty percent, the building coverage being just the buildings, the lot coverage including other. For pavement, pavement right, and then an FAR of 30, um, 83, yeah, 30. Um, and then we discussed that. I don't know what you're and that we raised those numbers, right? We raised yeah, numbers. yeah, we yes, yes we did. We raised the lot coverage. I think originally it was twenty five percent, was only five percent right. more. Right. I didn't think we that agreed that after we looked at all the presentations that that. Well, was no, it wasn't. I mean, that was just I didn't think there was enough coverage. So I suggested we go up to thirty, and we had okay. a broad. And right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And she so did. Had all those she did different ones with right. thirty five percent or whatever. Right. And then the FAR was at twenty five. But then when we actually work with some numbers and stuff, 30 seemed to make more sense. And then, so what that's, um, in, in, the, in the letter that we got today from the, the uh, we are, from the math people, um, uh, I, I thought the numbers in this footnote were helpful. That the, um, if we, we have, we have been focusing on assisted living, not that that's necessarily going to be the use that's going, going there, but it's the use with the picture because <laughs> the board dealt with it. That the the FAR or that senior housing project going up on Dobbs Ferry Road is 0.29. So that's similar. And the FAR of Brightview, the one with Brightview on, on um, 119 is 0.35. So 0.30 doesn't seem have to power off, but it seems certainly in the range of the. Are you comfortable staying with those? I yeah, remember, I remember, I remember yeah. her charts and thinking it made sense at the time. <laughs> and I would yeah, and she, she had remember. the chart, and then, yeah. then we made them a little bit, a little bit bigger. I think the charts were mainly for the building, so I think you were comfortable with the building. Okay, so. And I think by looking at. The, the drawing tonight, you could see that 20 with 20 percent coverage looked like on that side, and it seemed about the only thing I saw is that there didn't seem to be any particular reason that the building had to be moved that close that much closer to Broadway. No, except that, yeah, but it was a yeah, but I understand it was a demonstration of what would happen so, if it was closer. So then that brings us to the next question is how does the board feel about? permitting the buildings to come closer to Broadway. And I you say by a special permit or, or, or another mechanism. Well, what are we saying now? It's a, it's a 250 setback or a 200 it's a, setback? 250 foot setback on Broadway. And then when does the two-story and, and it, Pardon? The two-story is? That's three, and, and within, from 250 to 300 feet, it can be two stories after 300 feet. It can be three stories. That's what's in the zoning now. So what do we do to encourage underground parking? Doesn't that, does that add a story? 
Well, I mean, you, you, I think you'd need to define it so that it doesn't get counted as a story oh. and that it doesn't get counted as FAR. I don't think it would get counted as FAR right now the way. But I'm more worried about the storiness of it. Than yeah. I, so you see, so you, you would just have a provision that says, you know, I, I would check with that to make sure that um, if, if we didn't have that provision, would it be counted as a story in our FAR? If it wouldn't be, well, then it's not an issue. If it would be, then you would have language that said that it won't be, as long as it's all completely underground, it won't be considered a story. Well, and, I, we, and then it doesn't count against the FAR. Right. But one thing I was going to say is that, sorry, um, we, we've seen before that, at least with Brightview, that the farther back, the, the farther away from Brightview you go, the easier it is actually to do underground because of the grade. So it makes it a lot simpler um, to for it. So my question is, how do we encourage it? You know, is there anything that's 250? What does that mean? Well, I'd like to go to 250 and 300 feet and not let anything come closer. Is that incentivizes underground parking? I think. I'm not saying I agree with it, but that was the answer to the question. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going to get this one. Can we hear what there's going to be? If there are if there are two buildings and one is towards the back and that has the underground parking, can't the other building needs be met by that back building? A parking for there is for those people. Yeah. It could be. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so say yeah. there's that you know, layout that yeah, you just have to walk there. Yeah. yeah, you know, you have to walk from there to there. How hard is that? Well, not, not if it's a nice green space and not a big parking lot, you can have yeah. trails and walk, walkways yeah. and trees. Is a meadow and, um, to yeah. walk through? Deer. Raccoons, <laughs> <laughs> <Ghosts. Ghosts>. coyotes. <laughs> and it'll be a pollinator path. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I, I totally support it, as you are, that underground parking. I mean, just the, it may not be cost effective. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah but, but I don't, but I, that's not an issue. There, I so, mean, do we want to consider, even if we're not counting it as a story, do we consider giving Some. extra height? So in other words, you know. But wait a minute, no, you know what? You, you, they do extra. have the bonus of so they're yeah. not getting, it, if it, it weren't count. underground, it would be in part of the yes, coverage, is, or it would be, you know, so it's not getting there is an, included uh, in, in their coverage. So there is an, there is an internal advantage. Just yeah, height. to do an adapt. And a lot of us, we're not doing it from the, you know, the way that heights are calculated for residential buildings, then we're okay, right? What do you mean, from lowest to highest? But no, it's lowest on the ground. This is below ground. But you have to have access to it, so don't you have to have the highways that... You know what, either, right. either right. the code so counts as a right. historian that they have, or it doesn't, and if it doesn't, you write it in. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's, okay. there that you go. Good. Cool. Okay, good. good. Yeah, no, Bring that part, no. What, <laughs> you didn't answer my <laughs> question. It's <laughs> just about with the underground oh, part. Yeah, yeah. What about I letting the building... Oh, yeah, yeah. Letting the building really closer, that's the question? Okay, so take this scenario, all right? You've got attached housing. We've got affordables built into it. There's provision for underground parking, but in order to put all of these pieces together, they want to have some sort of clubhouse or something that might be a bit closer to Broadway, but they're going to landscape it and it's going to have pollinated pathways or whatever. <laughs> Just do we do we not want to even consider that? I mean, I can certainly foresee something where it would be absolutely accomplishing a lot of our goals, but in order to make it attractive, they might need to pull in closer to private. I, if this is one of the ones where I think we should leave ourselves like, some flexibility. I like the idea of special mechanism, similar mechanism. Yeah. Special mechanism. Like, I'd rather have a special mechanism. Yeah, 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 we, we won't be, I mean, that kind of special parking is not going to be defined. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you, but, but that's up You're to talking to about the same thing which has come up with. But board. that's up to us, right? Well, if, do you want that? That's the question. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. You could say it's a special exception granted by the board. Because right. right. so it would yeah, be have that on a couple of things. In the it problem. would be for public good. It would be, be for public good. Not, yeah. not. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I need some cigars. <laughs> and especially if that for, that building may be included a local museum or something, it really was for the public good. Okay. And do you, do you, 
What reasons might you see for it? Well, one of the provisions would rise as would be that there be a well, that it has so um, landscaping. It has, yeah, well, that kind of thing. But in terms of use of it, or you just mean in terms of what it looks like? Yeah, and what can what situations would you want to be able to allow this escape? Well, it's down? certainly not just to get more rooms. I mean, that's not a right. A it would be something so. that the community would benefit from in some way. Now, is it, was that like a well, Janice's example. I said so the community doesn't really benefit. Right. No, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, as a way of constructing a desire of a multi-family development that, it, that meets the village's goals and the, okay. and the vision of the comprehensive planning, we can envision that there might okay. be a design that would have some sort of... Uh, I know where you guys are. I'll try to... Is that the key? Is multi-family-ness key? Yeah, I don't think it should be no, just multi-family. No, it could, be, it could be something like a, I don't know, I'm not going to say a visitor center, but some kind of something that... Reception center. Right, like right. a reception it's center. It's a way where people who... Like, suppose you have one of those small hotels, but you have a reception center where a valet takes the cars. You know, and drives them into the underground parking. So just, I think it's something we want to. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, 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 I'll try to come up with some. some okay. Way. Oh, okay. We're getting even more creative here. And, and what about? Um, okay, I'll go to an easy one. I think it's easy. What about permitting the on-grade parking to be closer to Broadway as long as it's adequately screened? Right now, it says you can't have anything within 250. Uh, but why? But I'm saying it does, says including parking, but you can't see it. I would it say it different. really depends on the grade because if you're talking about some of that grade, you're talking about a lot of of uh, either okay. fill or dirt, you know, removal. So because that's like at least like the Carfiella, and I'm not sure about Max or uh, okay. Max on as, as well. That's a pretty. It's still a fairly steep grade there. So to put a parking lot in. If it's not narrow, which is what's there at Carfiello or whatever the property is now, then you have something where you're going to have to have large retaining walls to make up to, for the grade difference. So that's where the it's not in, it's not like you could build a, par, a parking lot on a. Okay, you know what? Then let's forget that, and that would that would fit into. Um, whatever this other escape that we're going to have yeah. for special circumstances, if it seems to make sense to allow the parking up there. Okay. okay. And then what about permitting three stories within 250 feet, rather than 300 feet? If all of these could be special permits, where, which it just gives us more flexibility to, to, us to consider it's not inherently bad, it's because you can, you can you know. And especially with underground parking, you know. And you can, <laughs> no, but it, you again, can it's, it's, I mean, it has a lot to do right. with what something looks like right. and, right. and community character as opposed to Soviet style. You if know, it's an interesting roof line, maybe you something. do want to see it. What? If it's an interesting roof line, yeah. then you do want to see it. Right, right. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. good. Okay. okay. So then on the other issues, this is this is one this is one that came in. in um, I think this from might have been from the strawberry wine people about using the um, uh, language ne other, other issues. issues. Okay. Negligible increase in traffic would be the standard rather than not significant. Is, is negligible increase a legal term? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, let me tell you what the real issue is here. Is that it, it reads from existing. Well, right now, so many good properties are so underutilized, underutilized yeah. that if they do anything, it's going to be yeah. an increase in parking. I mean, increase in traffic. Let's say that beginning like part again. Yeah. That they're so underutilized a lot of these the property, property, the properties property. currently yeah. that if they do anything. So, so do we increase? So how do we work? Is it to, to so you do, do, do you fix so you fix, yeah. you, you fix strawberry lane for one. I mean I yeah. think uh, remember originally I think Susan um Ash I'm sorry Susan <laughs> that's okay Susan yeah because okay. they're both making KRF you know I'm KRF um, that it, 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 there were, it was different language about uh, 
remember it was some some objective standard, I think. Um, in what, in one of the initial drafts? Or? Yeah, for the traffic. I, I, I have one with me. Um, but anyway, so, this issue made me look at the language. And then I found that that language was kind of troubling. Because, yeah, the, it would be above existing to do anything. You put a single family house there, it would be above existing, you know? I agree. Uh, it's, and uh, because I remember when the car yellow or during one of the presentations, I don't know if it was before the, you know, uh, for if you came or not, but they talked about, I guess in the late 70s, or late 80s, they had, you know, 450 people working there. And that was a lot of traffic, you know. So from those days to now, you know, like it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's an interesting point because the university yeah. wasn't so big when the high school wasn't there. So <laughs> the impact was less noticeable. Right? Uh, just thinking. So what is it? Okay, so what do people think? I, uh, an objective research. standard to me, it would probably be better for her. Everybody, because uh, to me, again, yeah, not significant, first theory, negligible. But just remember one thing it's already, according to uh, the report we have about Broadway, it's already a failing intersection in terms of east west access, you know, getting out mm -hmm. or coming in. I would think living on River Relay, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yours is failing too, from the yeah. <laughs> so it's like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is, this isn't exactly objective, but you see what the difference was. This was on the first one of the first drafts. We'll have a, we'll have minimal vehicular traffic impact on the surrounding area. That actually makes somewhat more right. sense. That, right, that changes then the yeah. significant change. In the yeah. Yeah. Say that the phrase again. We'll have a minimal vehicular traffic impact on the surrounding area. So the, your question is, will, will it will it have an impact? And and, and that whether it's going to have an impact, right. then you do have those objective traffic uh, things like right you now it's at C and yeah. it'll stay at C. Mm -hmm. You know. So maybe we should go back to. And this is language. I, mean, I, understand, I understand the point, and I'm in yes. agreement with it that we don't want to, you know, encourage, you know, drag racing up and down the driveways of these properties. But, but you can't say there'll be no impact. You can't say somebody out there with a clicker counting how many cars are going by and saying there can't be any more than this. You're, obviously, there's going to be more. And at the risk of, you know, just opening up the doors when we start looking at the Broadway Carpenter recommendations, and that's going to. Have a huge impact on this as well. So if, if that language seems better, I mean, it's fine. And none of these are legally enforceable or measurable standards, right? Yeah. And the, you know what? It, that's better. That's the point we're getting at. But I think we can get, get a little bit better language than that. But, um, yeah, I agree. I think, I think it, I like that. that currently C, you know, it'll stay a C. It's not like, you know, it'll yes. have five more cars, you're out. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, how yeah. does the language about alternate routing fit in there. Is that a mitigation then? I'm sorry, what about alternate routing? No, it doesn't. Well, we talked about the Broadway Instead of going on Strawberry Road, right, right. not going to match to be all on Broadway. You might have less, right? Yeah, but you might have less traffic. Yeah. Well, you'd look yeah, at Strawberry Lane, it'd be less. I mean, I think that would be analyzed in whatever traffic studies require. All right, but I'm just saying, how do we call out the fact that we're back to the question that you delayed until we got to this Oh, point. yeah, we're there. Okay. Yeah. We're at the bottom of the list, responsibility for strawberry. I should just say strawberry lane issues. Yes, okay. we're there. Um, talk amongst yourselves. I can't <laughs> believe <laughs> Because Abbott House kind of maintains it, and other contributions are maintaining it. Like the yeah. village does not a public road, and it doesn't meet the, the standard, and there's a wall. I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> you move the wall. Does that help? If you can move a wall, can you make it standard? So you'd have to move it. We'd have to make it wider. Right? Yeah, but I mean, make it standard wider. Right. Which would, I would just have you given up there a few times, but that would really impinge on people's yards, wouldn't it? No, not if you tip it in the other direction. Oh, well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why they they had made the um, comment that if you're going if you're going to ex 
expand the road so that it takes away part of our property that shouldn't be deducted from our development. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't know enough about it. I'm sorry. I don't know. Anything else that you know about? I don't know how you solve a private private road problem. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's not. It's not our road. Well, yeah, they want us to take it. I get that, but there's about, there's, there's about 50 other roads that people want us to take too, and we always say now. All right, so we're not going to do it. So that so that may be in the standard, and, and it, might, it, it might be in the draft zone. Um, but they have to show that the, 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 the road can, can handle, handle the traffic. The and if you can't, they have to the do whatever yeah. it takes to, to make it able to handle it. That seems so it, 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 common sense to me. The, the, the burden is on whoever wants to redevelop the property. I, I, yeah, that's yeah and, and I do agree that if they do lose, you know, if they have to move their wall back, that they shouldn't be penalized for that. So, so is there any discussion with Abbott House about, I mean, it's, this so is just, just like an just informal arrangement that Abbott House has agreed to so maintain it? Or yeah, I, that's how it's worked. But apparently, I mean, I always thought it was just the Abbott House, but I think the people on Strawberry Lane said that they should, and that's something that said they should, and I don't know how it works. Remember, they don't want me to. Oh, you do. Oh, right. Yeah, but it's still, if it's there, if they have the property, then it has a revenue. I mean, that's what happens when you talk about private business. Whoever is next to it has to take care of it. Right. Anybody who wants the village to take off the road, they have to show that it meets all of the standards. Right. Which this does not. So it's next to it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
knows that they have this responsibility about the, the traffic and, and keeping it's a minimal vehicle traffic change. They know they How can't do, do that. How do you possibly enforce that? You can't, in a well, they might be fully booked on Friday night and not booked on Saturday night. It might be booked for a private party on Sunday when everybody arrives together. Now, once you, once you allow the youth, yeah. allow them, you can't say, hey, listen, you got to close, you got too much traffic, you can't do it. But I, what, what about my idea that it was at the lower part of Strawberry Lane? That would how much would that affect anybody very far up? They have to come in at the bottom. You have to leave through the top. What? Huh. You have to leave. Well, well so you leave at the bottom. So that's not that's not that really. Then you're only talking about the max on property, yeah. right? For restaurants. Because so, so we have a house, wouldn't be able to. Have a restaurant. Yeah, have one, I guess. Well, we said private right. access. That's still only the max maximum. Can Abbott House? We voted. We vote no. Can Abbott House go the other way? Who else? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, right now we Ab voted that town house. Right. Right now Abbott House. It's one way this way, and then one way that way, right? Yeah. Is there no yeah. other way out of Abbott House other than Strawberry Lane? Yeah, you got the river view. Yeah. River yeah. 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 You can go out. Don't you go in, but you go out. You don't have to go out. You enter via Strawberry and Lane. Yeah, Once you get a certain distance up Strawberry Lane, it's one way. But you right. can go up Riverview Road and get to Abbott House, can't you? No, it's one way. Next to uh, Brian's driveway, there's a, there's a back. <laughs> can we go around? Can we try around? Can we go around the fence? It's a tall fence, but you can do it. And there's a door. <laughs> all right, then I have a restaurant, that's all. What is, I don't know. I mean, so what, how, how would you define it? You can only do it if you have access on Broadway or, or at the bottom of blah, blah. Is that, where is the first house uh, across the street on Strawberry Lane? How far up? What is the, the, why is there's no way to get to have a house from and can't you change the What's whole thing? they come out? They come out. Um, okay. What's that? Irving Place? Is that how they come out? No, it's just right up right there. Yeah. yeah, it's just like a private. It's swinging around. It's it's like it looks like a driveway. So couldn't that become two? Couldn't the Abbott House go the other yeah. way down yeah. the hill? Is that it's, a right? It's pretty tough. Yeah, it's. it's I, you do anything, I guess, but uh, this is. Yeah. So, 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 that's Broadway? Yeah. I mean, that was, that's the first driveway. And then, there, and then there's a you know, larger like so here's strawberry uh, state driveway where's the yeah. first house on so this is simple drive they, they don't go on to strawberry lane right they just go back to broadway it's about half what is this it, it's just short of the it's entrance to the house next on the park okay. it's, a street, it's a street off of strawberry lane so it's not actually a house street, street. They, they, it's they have to get off to strawberry lane it's a very long driveway it's a dirt road into the so old castle. Is this, what is it's this? Just a, this one before that. This is the first house. So do you want to say access to the water? We can figure out the number of feet. Castle, 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 castle one mentioned. So it has to be the number of feet. This is looking towards Broadway. Is there a stone wall right there? I'm sure that's going to be. So that's what we're going to do this. And it has to be within the house. So how does everybody feel about that? That it has to be on Broadway or something? Yeah, but that's when the first one was. That's the first one. Yeah, okay. Strawberry so, Lane, meaning before wherever the first drive well, maybe it's not the first house. Maybe the first house is separated by a lot from the next house. I, I don't so know. So, what exactly. we're doing is saying that one property can't have a restaurant? Right. Which one is property. probably the least likely one ever have a restaurant. Right. Too, but, you know, I know. Right. We're still, that seems to be views would be spectacular. I'm sure. Well, yeah, 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 trying to. I mean, we, we've been in these conversations before where we set things up and it just never happened. We had long discussions about something that eventually never mattered. So I think this will definitely cost <laughs> us. We've done that many times. But you still have to think them through. I mean, I don't know. You can't just... So it's, it's somewhere here. I can't tell too much about how many properties are how far up. There's this one. Yeah, here. who, what mm -hmm. restaurant is going to pay to improve a yeah. road? Well, I don't know. It's not going to be the restaurant. I mean, part of the going to share the driveway. The well, they're going to end up sharing you know, a the restaurant that's nice. part of a hotel or a convention center. Yeah, once you, you know, it seems to me once you've got the requirement no, that they have to improve the road, it's right. not going to happen. 
I mean, restaurants are on such a rate. There's not that high turnover ever to join. Yeah. All right. That's, that's, we're, 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 just have, we're just allowing restaurants with no limitations other than the general limitations. Oh, so now we're okay with it. Okay. All right. You are. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm I am perfectly good. Oh, okay with being in the minority, but I just wanted to be. Right. Oh, yeah, that was the rest of the show. Okay. I'm sorry. I, told you, I want to reserve. I taught you so. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> like my blue sign. I just have to go back one more time. So we got rid of the Broadway Act. For Maxon, is that what we got rid of? For restaurants. For Maxon, for restaurants. Yeah. Yes, we have. We don't have. We don't have Broadway. Wait, do we have Broadway no, restaurants? Restaurants, 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 restaurants can have an access to. Yeah, property. the hotels had. Okay, so that what we just said. We said how did I miss this? <laughs> hotels. Okay. Oh, you know what? I have it, but I crossed it out because I thought it was next to the rest of us. Okay. Now I'll do it. I'll do it right this. Okay, so the only thing that needs an access on Broadway are the boutique hotels. And you know what? Um, you know, Hammond House would never, I mean, the size of that building, they're not going to ever develop it into a 35 foot hotel. <laughs> You know? Are they going to develop it into uh, a multi-family? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. There's, there's parts of that building. There's parts of that building. It's so weird. We're not going to keep the entire building. No, but um, there's one building itself. It's no, they're going to keep that building up because it's way higher than would be allowed. And it's got, you know, a crown lane. It's got such right. And that, that could be converted into some of the permitted uses and maintain this beautiful yeah. structure. And it yeah. wouldn't... You know, it would be the kind of use on Strawberry Lane would be probably less okay. than this. So, so we're terms saying of, that the okay. hotels have to have access to Broadway? Yes. We had that discussion. Yeah. We, we had that right. right. Three it's, hours ago. It ships sales. <laughs> <laughs> but but, um, no, but the multifamily, I mean, all right, forget it. We know, we know. Um, okay, let's talk about the, the, how, what we're going to do next. Was this on for the... Was this on for the was the public hearing at the Monday's meeting? It's, it's still open. It's open. It could be open. Okay. Right. But we're not, uh, not going to have the changes by, by Monday. We can just consider, we can take comments. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I could probably put together the changes. At all. I mean, That's I the best why. weekend ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Nothing else. Okay. 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 You're back. We're going to get this done. I'm leaving for France next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I'm okay. asking my paper because I'm going down. to France. I'm sorry, guys. Tell her we need it on the day. <laughs> no, I could probably make. But the thing is, it 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 it's like um. Changing the you know the music in the middle of the song, you know what I mean? It's gonna it's gonna be a little odd, isn't it? So what? Well, what, we should, what I thought we could do is we could we could actually have the last public hearing under the current draft, and then we'd start to we kind of start to take more take more. Kind of, that's kind of doesn't make sense. No, but then you're kind of wasting time. Yeah, right? and you're potentially dragging people to come out thinking yeah, they're gonna make comments. And on they're something gonna that. make comments. Oh, we already made that change. We're gonna do, yeah. But it's already, the agenda's already published, I see. What? No, no. No, but I mean, Five the days. only thing that's happened is that at the last meeting, the board, you know, adjourned the, or kept open the public hearing to the next regular meeting, which is Monday. On the agenda itself, what I can do is put the public hearing there and in some sort of a note or parenthetical remark indicate that uh, this public hearing will be adjourned <coughs> or, or I have to say either Adjourned or closed, but because I think yeah, I think we have to re-notice. We have to re-notice it anyway. Re yeah. Okay. It. So why don't we say that that this public hearing will be adjourned until October, whatever the next meeting yeah, is, October second or something. You know what I mean? And then that, at that point, we'll have the new legislation re-noticed. And, and we'll, you'll have it in hand. And we'll have it in hand and attach it to the agenda. I mean, because the thing is, I could get it done for the meeting one day, because I'm probably going to do it right now, because otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> but 
Well, maybe what we can do is we can publish. But the thing is, nobody will have had a chance to read it, and it no. doesn't, so it doesn't we, make sense. We do that you want, we, now we have interest groups involved and commenting. Right. We want them to have time to do it. Yes. 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 Right. And we don't want to waste their time at the same right. time. Right. Exactly. Right. So exactly. We can, um, for the groups that have also reached out, we can, we can send, send them send a draft it. and tell them yeah. that, hey, we're, we're not closed. We're closing the public hearing on a technicality. But we're not like you know voting on it or something. By the group, you mean it's strawberry, strawberry Lane, Lane group. Yeah, okay. and people of correspondence. Any correspondence, we'll send out. The and I'll put the parenthetical on the agenda so that people people don't think we're. Just I don't want to just eliminate it from the agenda because right. they'll wonder where it is. Right. In parentheses, it'll be this is being adjourned until. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. But just yeah, that way they don't have to come out to talk about it when they're going to be getting a new draft to, to comment on. It. Right. Yeah. They could watch this meeting online. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, that was easy. All right. Next. No, we actually got to do that. Well, you had it really well organized. So, so you guys uh, aren't coming think. on Monday. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think it's that necessary. Nice. I think you yeah, might just heard that. Sense. No, I mean you. you well, did your I mean, job tonight. Yeah. yeah. It's very happy well, that you guys did that for him. Uh, oh, good. I was coming back Monday, <laughs> but I don't know it's. Uh, oh, okay, good. Perfect. Good. So it worked out for everybody. <laughs> Um, well, we'll like to put we'll like put these yeah. comments together responsive to yeah. the draft as it's as You can see we have a lot of fun out. here, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to be sitting there too. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so the next item is discussion of the Route 9 Act of Transportation Carter study. Bye. 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 Right, yeah. Of course, Greg, I need to talk to the inside. I'll be right back. Should I wait, or do you know when the introduction is going to be? I think I know. I'm pretty yeah. much up to speed. Okay. Unless you're going to. No, no, uh, no curveballs. <laughs> You know, okay, so um, uh, the next item, um, just to give you a little background on why this uh, is in front of you. So the, the as you know, this, the larger Route 9 corridor study was completed over the last couple of years. Um, the village, uh, our, our village along with uh, four others were very supportive of the joint project uh, to do that study. And um, uh, after receiving the study and reviewing it, uh, we decided to engage the services of a uh, traffic engineer to help analyze uh, what is written in the uh, in the report itself and and what it would really mean for uh, the segments along Broadway uh, north and south um, which we can talk about separately so um, the my intention wasn't to go through the entire analysis here you probably had a chance to take a look at it um, I like to jump to the easy parts um, which are the conclusions and recommendations. <laughs> so, um, Can I just ask before yeah. this, there's a draft resolution? Yeah, so. We'd be discussing that tonight? Yeah, so that's, I guess, maybe the order is not correct, but um, that's what we're getting to. So, um, so ba basically, and maybe I should, I'll include that part right now. So, um, the other communities have reviewed the study and have um, adopted resolutions endorsing it um, and uh, supporting it, um, and we have not yet. Uh, the other communities um, have done varying degrees of, of support for the plan. Um, a few of them have said we endorse it. A few of them have said we endorse it, but we have these few concerns that we want to make sure don't get forgotten, um, and so they work that into the language of the resolution. Um, we weren't ready to do a resolution like that until we had this analysis completed to help us better understand what the impact could be. Um, the goal here, and the reason that I've included a draft for discussion, not anything, change it any way you want. Um, the, the goal here is to um, 
get to a point where we can be supportive of the plan in general, but uh, recognizing that there may be um, parts of it that are uh, that need special attention or that we may have serious concerns about. Um, I think that'll still get us to the point where the five villages involved are still unified in their approach and wanting to, to do something in the Broadway corridor without you know, giving up our ability to, or losing control of, uh, of what happens in our village. Um, yes, I just want to underscore, yes. Yes. So we want to support the overall effort, but ma maintain control over how this gets done because of our significant concerns about some of it. And right. Effect on everything. Yep. So that's really, that's what we're trying to get to. It's kind of, uh, it would be, um, it would, in, in my opinion, it would be unfortunate if we, um, couldn't express at least some sort of support for the plan. Um, I think that does a lot of damage to the to the corridor villages in total. Um, so by by putting some thoughtful comments together and um, you know including that in some sort of a support resolution, I think we can get there and kind of thread the needle. Um, so the the summary uh, and recommendations really start on page 13 of of the uh, the Kimley Horn. Um, analysis that, that was attached to the agenda um, points out that that there are significant challenges on uh, the, the traffic uh, constraints on North Broadway particularly and that uh, implementing the uh, the plan as designed would uh, would further exacerbate that um, they express uh, considerably less concern about the issues on South Broadway in terms of, uh, you know, traffic levels and, and volumes. Um, so, except for uh, the stretch still between South Broadway and Harriman. Right. I mean, uh, between Maine and Harriman, especially Sycamore, was problematic, right? Uh, didn't say Sycamore. I thought it, it uh, first hundred feet or so immediately north of Clinton Avenue. They were concerned about losing the parking off of the south of the parking, but also the yes. there was a quality of service on the uh, impacts on at Harriman and Station Road because of losing the turning lanes, or losing what's effectively a turning lane right now. Where's that part about Harriman? I'm just trying to find it. Well, look at this summary. Yeah, I am. Page Broadway from the sunny side. Keep going. Broadway from Sycamore to Langdon. Now, it should be in the middle. Broadway from Sunnyside. Page 13. Now, from, yeah. from Sunnyside to Sycamore. Oh, so that's the whole length. Okay, so that's that's not Harriman. That's only Sycamore. No, I don't think he thought there was that big a... I think he said there was some effect on... Well, you uh, have to look at the actual, um, yeah. the actual turning levels of service go. So now are you on page 14 somewhere? Is there a paragraph? It goes from an A to a D for left turn lanes. Uh, on the middle of the third paragraph on 13. On 13. Third paragraph on 13. The intersection of Arsley Avenue. Okay. So northbound you get basically you drop get a, a level of service of it drops you know three grades to a D. I, I understand that this report differentiates greatly between the north part and the south part and sees very few problems with the southern section of the road. But Mark, you were at the, the presentation at Mercy College, as was I, and we both I think looked at the, the, the boards that were posted and had real concerns about how, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but that that's what you, we both felt like, wait a minute, that doesn't exactly capture. And one of the real concerns I have is that in the southern portion, there are a lot of driveways that exit right onto Route 9. And I'm really concerned about this elimination of lanes, and um, I, I, I see it as having more of an impact than, than this report sets forth. Because the, Report is looking at intersections only. Right, but the reality is that for most of the houses, and full disclosure, mine being one, I don't have any ways else to go. 
and there's you know a bunch of it, I, I counted it on the way to that presentation I forget but I think it was eight or nine something just from you might have, you told me ten so so ten so it's probably ten um, but there's a lot um, you know and I, I don't think we can ignore that because this is a you know a significant issue because if you're having people trying to get out of their driveways and they can't and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and then they, you know it's then they pull out and before they should, and it, 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 I see it as a potential. We also have the other issue that you mentioned before, which is having to cross the bike lane. Yes. To so to pull out of your driveway. Right. I'm trying to figure that. Right. So instead of drive, instead of pulling out into traffic, you're pulling out into the bike lane now. Yeah, well, that really helps. Well, you're right. not actually you're not you can't well, drive. Right. You're the pulling lane. across the bike lane. Across the bike lane into, 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 into a single lane into, into a single lane of traffic. Oh, it's a single lane. Right. right. Okay. And as right. opposed to, yeah, the, you get to yeah. Okay. See, so, you know, I, I've had other people talk to me and they said, well, what's wrong with the aqueduct? as a path, except that you would need to improve the grade itself, you know, the, the quality of the, of the uh, surface. They won't do that. Yeah, but that's the it's state of the that's, that's on the last page of this. It's a pedestrian. It's a pedestrian. The aqueduct folks. But not with the same bicycles that they're riding. Right. Okay. Those bikers, street those street street bikers street. don't want the aqueduct. They definitely don't want, a, you know, a dirt, you know, real, well, that's what they want, you know, right. that's nice. But um, the walkers want. Of course, cyclists could choose to continue the aqueduct into Tower Time. There may be benefit to improving the riding surface on the aqueduct. You know, um, but I just, I just, everything that they, that is set forth about the concerns about the north section here, the amount of significant delay. And we just spent two hours talking about developing the corridor, the north, what are we calling it, the north Parkway corridor, right? With, with, and we agreed that there would be additional traffic. There would necessarily be. There's so many problems. <laughs> I mean, to me, the only thing from this that's kind of actionable match is potentially getting additional rights of way and putting in sidewalks, which is very expensive. Yeah. And, and, and probably the moving wall. That probably, probably moving wall. Yeah. Well, yeah. we just the walls anyway, so that's easy. But um, <laughs> we're going to put the shallows on. But who was saying before about, um, about the private road? You know, when you was, one of you made the comment. So if you buy a house on a private road, that's you know it's a private buy. road. So you bought a house on the east side of Broadway. You noticed when you bought it, there was no sidewalk, right? You know? And I'm not saying that that means you're condemned to always have and that we can't really visit things and look at making things better, of course. But there's an awful lot of factors here. Mm. But this isn't really being driven. I, I'm sorry. I, my, from my perception, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but this whole thing is being driven by the bikes, the bikers, the bicyclists. And it's not being driven by that's the black leather. leather and yeah, yeah, it's not being driven by the walkers. No. Where's that in South Broadway? So, Austin, Texas. Yeah, so I, I just, I, you were talking about, how, you know, driveways pulling out across bike lanes. So this is, obviously it's not Broadway, but it's a it's a condition. It's, it's not particularly daunting in terms of pulling across a bike lane. It's not as though it's a restricted area. You okay, know there's I mean? only one difference. You have really no, good visibility. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm, right. I, I just, I'm just right. saying that, that, that in terms of pulling, yeah, on Broadway, it's, it's straight, so yeah, the point true. is, is pulling across bike lanes is not, it's not as though you're um, dodging, you, it, it, the issue is pulling into a single lane, that's more of the issue. Well, yeah. that plus well, the visibility when you're back out. In context, if there's a tremendous increase in right. bike traffic, it would matter. Right. So with all of those, also all of those walls along Broadway there, mm -hmm. so in order for me to see a cyclist, I have to be like inching out of my drive. I'm very careful, I always look, but not everybody uses lights, not everybody, you know. Right. So, so what was the original solution that you had here, Larry? You had the, um, the resolution that would reflect what? Well, it was, it, there was a generic support with issues. Right, so right. where are the issues, whereas? It's on the second page of the. Yeah. The question is, are the issues strong enough? They were able to Well, yeah, I mean, that's what we have to talk about. Public yeah. outreach, all those things are Oh, good. that's not as a criticism. Yeah. Resolved. Yeah. 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 
work with this neighbor. Yes. The issues identified that require additional analysis by New York State Department of Transportation as follows. Where, where are you reading? It's the second. Oh. Under resolve the fourth paragraph. So I think we need to add a couple more. I understand, the, the, and I don't disagree with wanting to support a lot of work has gone into this, and you know, this could in, in increase usability of the road in, in many ways. So I'm not, but I think we need to add some additional concerns here. Because this is all the north part, not the yeah. Well, first of all, I think that the same question about reduction in road width and blah 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 congestion has to apply from. Main Street to uh, Harriman, that stretch. Or at least to Main mm -hmm. Street to sure. Sycamore. We have to have an identical kind of statement. Sure. Because, you know, because their whole plan is based on the main, all parking south of uh, south of Main Street. Right. Which yeah, is like, yeah, yeah, that sounds those, like a good thing to do. Those businesses and, yeah. On both sides. Yes. And get more land on the east, which means the only way to get it is to cut into where the parking is up on the hill. Up on the right, hill. or, and again, in those areas that there are probably solutions that are shared roadways. Yeah, shared yeah. roadways would be the most obvious. And that's, you know, yeah. so, but as long as we express what the concern is, we don't need to engineer it, you know what I mean? We just express right. we it. Right, we have to solve it. Well, so we have to say these of, are issues that remain. So clearly the loss of, uh, I mean, loss of parking along along Broadway in the vicinity of Main Street. Main, Main to Sycamore? Well, yeah, wherever the... Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is. Yeah. Because, I mean, do you guys remember when, um, I don't remember why he was here, but the owner of the River City Grill was talking about he pushes his employees to park on Broadway towards Station Road there, and that it doesn't have an impact on any other businesses, and that keeps his employees park somewhere reasonably accessible to his business. I'm not saying we, we don't accept this recommendation because of one business's needs, yeah. but it's, you know, you have to, there's yeah, no, a lot I, of moving parts here. Right. Spots are being eliminated, I think about five spots. Some of those spots are being eliminated. Five yeah. to seven of them are being eliminated by Parker Ridge. Right. Yeah. And, and a new one. But new space is built across the street. In the little parking lot, remember? Because of well, the right, right. Yeah. we're going to add yeah. some uh, do we know that, that Katerina and Leola want to be uh, representatives given our significant reservations about the project? I don't know. They, I was calling them out because they were on the steering committee. Mm -hmm. And we certainly want to acknowledge they, I, they did a tremendous amount of work. I, I get that. They did. But, you know, Mark, like you said at the beginning, this is yeah. driven by the bikers. and I don't think that, I don't think that's accurate, though, that we're rejecting the plan, Larry. I, I, I think it's um, accepting the plan with with modifications or or with concerns being addressed. Right, but the main, I mean, in my mind, and I went to the presentation, and I'm not sure I would agree that that's driven by bikers, but I think the main aspect of this plan is changing it to a three-lane road with a turn lane in the middle. Right. And we're rejecting that for more than half of our village. Because of the traffic impacts. Because of all the impacts that we've done. At least half, and you know, Janice is concerned about that. Right, right. Yeah. So the problems are so that's different the north and south. The but they're, you know, they're you know, I'm, you know, I would love to see sidewalks on. You know, I think so. I think that's highest uh, priority. Yeah. Right, I mean, in my mind, putting a sidewalk on the other side of the Broadway is what I'd like to see out of this project. So I'm, I guess I'm, I'm uncomfortable saying we endorse this project except for, because it sounds like there's so many reservations. I don't want to not endorse it. I understand that if every all of the village is affected, but we, I think we need to find language that indicates where we agree in principle. It's a nice try. Well, where we agree in principle, we agree with the goals, um, but that there remains significant. Um, you know, our guess. highest priority is to get pedestrian uh, access on the uh, east side of Broadway. That's our highest goal. Well, is it? Well, uh, Pedestrian okay. safety, I think, is it? Uh, and traffic flow. For well, yeah, but I mean, if we're talking about making any changes, isn't that the goal? I mean, why would you make changes if you weren't actually? Uh, well, I, uh, I'm not sure. Let me take the story. I'm just not. I'm not sure. I would say that the the certainly the section of Broadway, the southern section, the east side. 
there's there's space to walk. It's not an official sidewalk, but there's a verge. It's also because it's a clear sight distance. People run across Broadway all the time. Well, we get those complaints from Cindy Lane people all the time. Well, they also yeah. run across Broadway all the time, you know. You got to. So, so did you well, notice I think on you can um, express that we we support the idea of of some type of unified project. You can speak in those sort of general terms. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can absolutely all agree that we, you know, yeah. want to work with the other villages. We want to have some type of unified project. Mm -hmm. But in terms of everything, back to the drawing board. <laughs> Effectively, let's see. Well, I think, I think we do need to be specific. I mean, let's, let's help them along, and just in terms of explaining um, not solving it, but explaining a little more. Now, Larry explained here, let's see. We'll Identify it, okay. issues. Let's see, I just want to read this part. Know if we only had a bike lane on the west side of Broadway, most of, on the southern part of it, most of those driveways are on the eastern side, right? Uh, right? Yes, most of, most of the driveways are on the eastern side. Not all, but most of them are on the eastern side. We had the two lanes on the west side. Some of the plans had bike lanes on only one side of Broadway, not on both. In fact, at Mercy intersection, going into Dobbs Ferry, both lanes are on the west. So I'm just missing the, the the one thing I'm missing is this this idea of a bike lane being at the edge of a driveway being a negative. I actually, with when you have four lanes of Broadway packed into the width of the roadway that you have now. That means you have a lane, a full lane of travel at the edge of your driveway. So now instead of that, you're ha you actually have a buffer space of a far less utilized bike lane instead of a full speed travel lane at the edge of your driveway that you're trying to pull out of. But the own, uh, but it's a three lane road, the only, the only thing that you're backing out of <coughs> once you cross that bike lane is the one. Yeah, one yeah. Right. One you're, you're 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 so right now you're out. Right, you're well, right now there's no more. Turning lane. So the turning I know, but there, but but the, but there's a there's a. It's not as though there's any buffer. There's a, right now there's a full travel lane. It goes right up to the edge of your driveway. Not yours, but well no, maybe yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right to the edge of a driveway. So. So what? Yeah, but it what seems I understand is because when you finally turn into the traffic. It's two lanes that you choose, so you can go in the one. Well, you if there's you're not else. allowed to, you know, you have to turn turn into the closest. I mean, you can't leave the far turn. Right. Right, so you come out of here. You, you can't the, get into the first lane. You can't get into the second lane. <laughs> no, you go well, into the Well, the reality is you're waiting until all lanes are clear because mm -hmm. there's so little margin for error that you can't turn into the, the, the right. nearest and travel lane without, <laughs> without edging into the other one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So on that right now, not, not, in that section in front of your house, there are two lanes going both ways, right? Right. right. And so the proposal is to have one lane going both ways, right? right. And a bike lane going both ways or just on, on both sides, right? No, just on one side. On, on which side? Well, the on current side, plan is, is a bike lane on each side, the current plan. Oh, well, what is oh, it? Oh, one on each, one right. right. On each but side. They, but that could be easily be modified to have both on one side. In fact, my biggest question is just, oh, okay. finish yours, Connie, then I'll, I'll just... It would look like that picture. Well, that I had. Yeah. I mean, you know, it have, it's two, two lanes on one side. Well, I don't think we have to solve, I mean, all we're trying to do tonight is figure out language for this to support them, but say that there'll be main issues. What are, uh, my other question is, like, let's say that that's, that was, you know, as wide as an airport there, and you have two beautiful bike lanes. Why does, I, I don't understand how like an isolated bike lane helps. Like if you have like just a section, you know, to me it's like if you could have a bike lane from here to Poughkeepsie, it's fantastic, or here to the Tappan Zee Bridge, or here to even 119. But if you're gonna have like just one section, like well, they want it to be the whole way. I, I get that, but I'm saying, but like we're saying, well, we can't have it in the north part of our our village. Tigertown said they can't do it at all, on, and they're Broadway because they have parking on both sides and they can't get rid of parking. So it's like. We'd have the southern part of our village would have two bike lanes that now you know impeded traffic, and it goes to what like you know the, so you get and to you have to get on, on into the lane like they do now. Right. So that's what, but to me, it's like 
I, I just don't see a big advantage. Like, oh, great, I have a scrape lane now for 200 yards, and now it's shitty again. Like, I, I, so, so what about the the charros on the road itself? The the markings. That, that, I mean, it's it's not any safer than not having the arrows painted, other than it just makes awareness that there could be bicycles traveling in these lanes. That's the only well, that's thing. The assumption safer. of this yeah, whole project is that there are going to be many more bicycles. So this, this, is, this is a concern. Yeah. And to me, like, you know, if you make a, uh, even one small section of a, of a um, sidewalk, that's that's useful because you can walk to some you know like as opposed yes, to yes, a small yeah, piece yeah, of yeah. a small piece of a bike trail is like great now you go back to the middle of the road again you know like it's that's why I don't really get like to do all this work to have yeah. like, even if it's even if it's from Dobbs Ferry to Main Street it's to me that's like that's great those kind but, of bikers don't want to yeah. do that they want to so can we get them over to the 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 other that that the, the, the South Trailway what do you call it South Trailway South Trailway. That's where we want them to go. Well, they, I don't think that's right for them either. That's not made for. No, the South Trailway. Is it? Yeah. yeah, I mean. I don't know why not for those guys. I never see them. Huh? I don't there, see. I them don't see bikers on it. Bikers, but not the South Country Trailway. Not race bikers. No, oh. not the Lance Armstrong not guys. Not right? bikers. Yeah. Okay. The spandex. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I agree with Mark's original thing that as far as our concern in Irvington, sidewalks and pedestrian safety is like way up there. Yeah, I'm not saying we shouldn't have a sidewalk. I mean, I love way. bringing people in. I'd like them to come by train. Can't they come by train? <laughs> um. Well, so, you know, the thing is that, as Brian said, Tarrytown has pretty much put a garbage on a big section of this right around the heart of Terrytown, you know, around Main Street because of the parking. So the the thing is that they have to share the road with the cars. Yeah. And so But they if the plan is you come off the bridge and you go south, you don't go into Terrytown. You come this way. Well that is the plan. And yeah. The ability you to know, ride so then Terrytown's else. parking and lack of bike is not as much as a problem because they're not in downtown Terrytown when they come off. The okay, so then we're the problem. So they become our problem. They become our problem, right? That's why I say put them onto the aqueduct. Yeah. They well, they're not going to go on there, and the an aqueduct doesn't want them on there, so yeah. you and your thousand-dollar bicycle is not going to fare too well, so yeah. that's not going to work. But yeah, bikes and walkers. But we don't but, have to solve this. No, 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 no. But but I, I still think, in deference to to what what the mayor said, I think that. You still, whatever you can do will be a help to this plan. If you're on a 26 mile bike tour from the George Washington Bridge up to the Tappan Zee and then back down on this side, and there's a stretch of a couple of miles where you have to share the road, so be it. If there's a stretch within that where we don't have to share the road, that's great too. Yeah. But so this isn't about, you know, making it so that it's 100% throughout the entire route. I mean, obviously, in an ideal world, that would be great, but we don't live in an ideal world. We have Broadway that's too narrow, and stone walls and all the other stuff. So if there's a, if there's a way of articulating support for the plan, but with articulated concerns, or well, however you want to position it, it would, I think it would be a help to the entire Coalition. I think the way the approach that we're doing is so right. Where do you so, put the change? Right here is just staying north Broadway. Well, no, I mean I can I can work, I can yeah, probably eliminate some of the it. some of the verbiage that's in yeah. here that's that's a little flowery, but well, the only um, other thing is what are, so the one disagreement is about South Broadway about our issues on South Broadway because it seems like once you get past uh, Clinton. West Clinton, you know, this, the sidewalk issues, everything else, the, the narrowness goes away. I mean, that's the, what's in the report. You're, you're home free past West Clinton, right. effectively, south of. Right. Right, because it's not a sidewalk, but there's a, a significant verge on the. Right. Right. And you're also, you know, the, the one thing that I noticed that I, I didn't see how they were going to address it, but the bike lanes. I didn't hear anyone talk about it, you know, but the two bike lanes are on the west side uh, in Dobbs Ferry coming to the um, intersection with Mercy College. Then all of a sudden, 
They're split. Whoa! <laughs> so, I... Uh, wait. It's an interesting kind of I mean, it seems like you have to have a special bike lane then that says, you know, all its traffic stops so the bikes can cross over to the east side. Anyways. Yeah, I think they might have. It's, I don't remember. I don't know if any Well, they'll, yeah, but they'll have pedestrian signals there at that intersection. So, so what I noticed on Broadway in Hastings and Tom's Fair, did you, did you notice recently that they are added a lot of those yellowish signs and crosswalks? When, if, you're, if you're in Hastings and coming back to Irvington, there are maybe six or seven new crosswalks painted and very uh, visible. Well, especially and right plus in front of the a, high school, that area. Plus a sign before the sign saying it's about to come, it's about to happen. You know, you've noticed these. It's only in the last, like, I don't know, month. Well, so. it's like the aqueduct crossing in the middle, in, in kind of the outskirts of Dobbs Ferry, right? They put one up there. Yes, and that one's like that one. Plus, there, but there, I'm going to say there are six or seven. Well, you're counting the ones in front of the school. Yes, yes. Because those went in. Those are four crosswalks in the school area. That, yes. That, that long right. block. Right. Right. But it's. I mean, it's. So it's the point is. Well, the point is, it seems to be a nice emphasis on the emphasis that we're talking about that is higher priority to us, which is pedestrian safety. I don't know how that intersects with this plan, but it's following the same route. And I don't know if, if, if we're to make a comment about this plan, are we able to put in something that talks about the, the lack of pedestrian safety Aspects. In Maybe the way to put it is that we, among the considerations we would like the group to consider is an emphasis on pedestrians. Excuse me, keep like on talking. That, yes. mm -hmm. but, but the plan does envision keep that, that, okay. that part of the plan is to put sidewalks on the east side of Broadway. So that's but, all right. That part is fine, but it doesn't it doesn't do much. I mean, when you just mentioned that thing about the bikes supposedly crossing. Um, yeah. How are they supposed to do that? You got to have a pedestrian light. That, there's pedestrian signals at all those intersections. Okay. All right. So everywhere that they say to, to go across, yes. there, there's a pedestrian All right. Well, that's better. I mean, you know, in the city, in the big city, they have bike lights. Yes. They have like. Right. And there's not a single bike that stops through red lights anywhere in New York City that I've seen, but that's another, <laughs> that's <laughs> another story. They don't stop here either for me. I know. Um, All right. Well, I mean, the reason, the reason, the reason we, did, we kind of say, you know, why we are generally supportive of, you know, bike lanes. We have, you know, in addition, we have a lot of concerns about, um, you know, the viability and the impacts on traffic. Um, yeah, so from driveways and mm -hmm. pedestrians. And we, you know, so we, you know, we we hope that we can still, you know, continue our focus on pedestrian safety and. Yeah. Possibly adopt as many as those here, wherever. Yeah, right. Like that. Yeah, yeah, really we can't that. afford to get those kind of delays into North Broadway. I mean, people oh, would be. No, I know that. But not just our residents, but anywhere up and down would be ready to kill us. And, road rage. And, and at the same night that we're talking about yeah. developing the North Broadway corridor, where there's definitely going to be More some road. increase yeah. in traffic, we're talking about. It putting a, supporting a plan that's designed to slow it down significantly. Oh my God! All right. Well. All right. Move on. Well, you know, there's, there's, no, I'll, I'll keep redirecting. Okay. There's, 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 you can make it a happy talk. I mean, I'm, I'm, here's the I'm, final I'm, I'm sorry that you don't have the ability to help the bikers. I just, I can't. I'm sorry. What? I mean, I, I, I started out by like being. Yeah, I know that that, that came yes, from the other. About um, the problem that you said. Uh, I'm sorry, which bullet point are you talking about? But you know, I, the directing the, the Irvington's designees. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable. Me neither. I, to be honest with you, it came right from the other resolution, so I I expect that I'd be rewarded. I'd rather not delegate any specific power. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and rather have them come and talk to us directly. Yep. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Submit a draft application. Okay. Oh. So this should take more than an hour. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you're optimistic. Yeah, I, I did have to include one business item on this agenda. We uh, uh, 
as, as you may know, we've been designing uh, the replacement of the water line underneath River Road or Bridge Street, whatever you want to call it, from West Main Street down to the park. And uh, the design is largely done. It's been submitted to the health department. We're waiting for their approval. Um, in the meantime, we found a, uh, a grant that is available. And um, the due date on the grant is Friday. Okay. So it was well, very it's on nice agenda. opportunistic that so we had to read it quickly. So, okay, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah, if you want to run through that. Sure, I'll read it out loud. So uh, Connie can listen. Uh, let me make one explanation quickly. I'm sorry. So the, there's a paragraph here that the mayor will be reading shortly. And, it, and it's the second to last paragraph. And it says, uh, when it talks about uh, committing 149556 in local matching funds to the project yeah. on existing surplus. The reason we put that in there is because, uh, although we're not just, we don't normally take money from surplus and just spend it on capital projects. We put that in there because we didn't want there to be any contingencies with issuing bonds. The, our grant writer was very clear about, you know, they, they'd rather have funding that they know is in place. But at the end of the day, we're, we're going to issue bonds for this project. I mean, it's it's a normal water project, but and there's no issues with that. But um, but for purposes of the grant, that's why it's in sure, surplus. It's the they don't want a contingency, yeah, exactly. Right. Whereas the village of Irving is applying for the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation for a Water Infrastructure Improvement Act grant for the River Road Water Main Replacement Project. And whereas the grant application requires the applicant's municipality's board of trustees to authorize the undertaking of the project, expenditures for the, expenditures for the project, and the obligation of the funds necessary for the local match. And whereas the total project cost is projected at $373,890, and the village will provide a match equal to 40% of this project cost, whereas the type the project is a type two action, number one, pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, thus requiring no further environmental review. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby does approve and endorse the application for a $224,334 grant out of the 2019 Water Infrastructure Improvement Act Drinking Water Program for the River Road Water Main Replacement Project, which has a total project cost of $373,890. Oh, $373, does authorize the undertaking of the project and, upon approval of the grant request, submits $149,556 in local matching funds to the project from existing sur surplus funds. And for the result, the village administrator is hereby authorized to sign the funding agreement with the Environmental Facilities Corporation and any associated documents. I will make a motion to my mouth. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Unfortunately, you ran out of water. You're drinking water, Jim? Water, Jim. We can use our uh, additional tax revenue to get more water. Is that what I'm saying? Or <laughs> jugs, jugs of water. Um, is some of these pipes affect the businesses there too, or does it only go to the park? Or? No, it affects all the businesses. <laughs> oh, okay, right. That's what I thought. It's not just for the park. <laughs> I just thought I'd clarify that this is a project. We're, now. we're in the process of securing some letters of support. Yes. <laughs> As you can imagine. <laughs> yes, right. That's so. It. I don't get a lot of those from the people over there. No, no. <laughs> um, discussion of use, possible use of traditional sales tax revenue. Um, I, I think to me, again, the, the intention was to offset um, property taxes or reduce the, you know, stop increases of property taxes. So I think to me that should be kind of the, the brush we paint this with, um, kind of Paying for something like I don't think we should spend this on additional things. I think we should try to find things that we were going to you know, spend money on because that we won't have to raise taxes to pay for them. You know, so that's to me, it's not. You know, if we wanted a, a gator for the mayor to ride around, and it would be a great use of the funds. But if you know we have to replace something or do something, I think that that's a, a great use because I don't, we, we won't have to raise taxes to do that. Um, and that's the whole point of this to mitigate the, the, the property exactly. tax increases. So are you? So, that's uh, specific things I have, I don't have anything. But you know, like, to me, it's like almost you go through the budget and say, what are some things we can, you know, especially if it's something that can save money by spending money. I think that'd be even better if we could figure out. I have only one, one argument against that. I mean, I think it's far better to spend it on something, including reducing tax burden, than putting it into, uh, you know, basically the reserve fund, which is what the 
to me, this is like if it's truly a windfall, we should be we should just go ahead and spend it. Our reserve fund is strong enough as it is. Right, maybe but, too strong. Yes, I, I agree with that. But I think we should. I, I don't think we should say, hey, we weren't going to do this. We should do that now. To me, it's like you use it to pay for something you were going to do or to save money on something. Well, what about an unbudgeted and unexpected expense? Do we have one? Well, I'm just thinking. It would be unexpected. Flaherty, yeah. you know, what Flaherty thinks that um, that he could use help doing the climate program by hiring a part-time person. That's not something that we've budgeted. Um, well, I, I mean, that was one of the ideas I suggested, and the other that was one a good idea. Was uh, but only, but only if that's something that. Well, it has to be more narrow. More narrow. I had it suggesting maybe that's how we get the greenhouse gas inventory done. Is can someone in time for the? Can someone who actually has done it and knows it, and not it, not as a criticism of you or anyone else, but just basically they know what they're looking at, and they can come up with work with you to come up with, um, you know, goals, reduction goals over time, for instance, or whatever. Right, but I, that, that's, but I thought that effort is what we applied for the, with the well, yeah, consortium. Is it being timely? Is it, the no. question is timeliness versus? No, it's not, but I think you can still, I think you can still achieve bronze certification without having that municipal greenhouse gas inventory done. Okay. I think so. Uh, I thought, I that, thought was, that was a, that's not a mandatory? No, there was two. I thought there was only two mandatories. Can we just verify that? I mean, not sure. Right now, but just no, I, I will. Yeah. The other thing, I, the only other one that I suggested that I thought stuck out was the uh, continued tree planting on Main Street. You know, we did a tranche of them, and the only way we're going to do it in the future is if we had a grant. But and I'm not disagreeing with any of those wonderful objectives, but that's a different category, thing from what Brian was talking about. I know. That's why I didn't say I agree with what Brian said. Oh, okay. But, but I think we have to... <laughs> I said there was another way to look at it. There was right. another so, set. But I think that those are two very different visions of how um, we go about using this windfall. And I think it's a question of whether we see it as a windfall in the sense, okay, good, go spend it. Or if we see it as a balance off of, of um, excessively high taxes, which is, I think, what the point of this was. Well, we already have a near zero tax increase this year, right? I mean, it's like. Because you can't. We could have a tax decrease, I suppose, but I don't know. The tax well, one's already in. So. You had some ideas before about the, the contracts, the, cap, the, the asphalt, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that, that was, again, that was to, yeah. the, that suggestion was simply to try to make up some uh, some additional headway on the paving program, which we have an extended, right. you know, many year program. But just to, to characterize what the kind of money we're talking about, and I think we talked about it at one of the last times when we first talked about this topic, um, you know, there, there's, there's kind of two components to this money. So the, there's next year, when you're formulating your budget, you'll be introducing a new line item, an added line item in your budget, um, equal to a full year's amount of sales tax that's projected. That's so that, the 343. That's the 343, right? So just for argument purposes, we'll use that. That number will be, uh, you'll, you'll be able to, in your estimated revenues, to include that in there. Right. Um, all other things being equal, that one item, one light item alone, will have the ability to reduce your taxes three percent. Without being into a specific, you're saying it will just be on this side of the ledger rather than that. We don't have additional revenue of three hundred forty. Right. 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 Right well, it's the sales tax is August through May, so it was it's actually about two hundred uh, two hundred eighty six thousand. But then the three forty three goes down. No. No, these no. it's not this time period, but it would still be we got like we got like nine months instead of whatever. Right. If you if you change the headings at the top of this page oh. and you were to say the, the column that says 
2019 August to December. You change that to say August to May. Yeah. That number would that number would then be 286. The next column over would then be June to May. And it's the same number. Three, four, Twelve months worth. Uh, just you know. Yeah. Right. right. So I, I mean again. So 286. I mean I think. I mean I think that, I don't think we necessarily can't do a couple things with that. Um, you know if we want to plant some trees. You know I think we can definitely you know definitely do that. Um, if you needed help with something, you know, if you needed a consultant or something, you know, um, I think we could do that. But I think we could also look to spend a chunk of it on offsetting costs also for you know, the help with next year's, you know. That's why I thought, that's why I thought I, actually the, the paving one was a good one because we spend that every year. So I don't think that's a bad idea, the paving, but it seems like the paving was, if I remember correctly, you were only talking about how much were you talking about for the paving? It wasn't the whole well, it was like no, no, no. I, I, I said a hundred thousand, but here, so you can, you can. Uh, I think if you step back from what the use of that hundred thousand is and focus more on um, how much of the two eighty six you would want to devote to um, added initiatives, as compared to how much you want to set aside to then. Put in your surplus to, to further offset, not just offset, because you, you're already gaining an offset with all of next year's revenue. But then, if you if you then take another 186,000 and 100,000 for new projects, let's say, and you take that other 186,000 and put that into tax rate reduction for next year, that might be a that's a suggested balance. What you think the balance should be is what we're kind of talking about here, and what, and then once you figure out what that balance is, then figuring out what that money is spent on is is kind of the next step. So the reason I don't like it, just the, off the top of my head, is this is a one time, not so if you're balancing taxes, you're actually it's kind of one of those facts, uh, fake tax no, way down balances because you because you have to raise it yeah. again. Yeah, yes. I mean, right. I'm much yeah. more comfortable saying that the, the, the 343 is. You know, definitely allocated. To, you know, it's the, yeah, that, toward tax yeah. benefit. The the other one, you might get into an issue with uh, over you know the following year. That's all. Yeah, it does right. right to me. No, yeah. that's a good point. But in my the way I look at it was you get it as much as that to me. Right. If there's something that we have to spend money on anyway, but we can use you know this money on that, then you are offsetting their costs. You know, especially if it's a one-time thing, like. I don't know what we, we're well, the expanded paving, though, is not, it, that's just moving ahead, something forward. So right? I, right, but we're not going to have to raise taxes for that in the future because we'll have to spend right. this money on it. Maybe we could also put it in reserve. Then, too. So I was, I was thinking about this in terms of what, what are, what are some major problems that our residents bring up over and over again about something that is a problem that would like to see solved. Sidewalks. Well, they're sidewalks. Yes, that's one. <laughs> no, no, sales tax for that. I know. Parking so, yeah. Well, all right. So I want that the, the word parking does come in, but I, I, I was thinking about, you know, we, we did the little bit to think about that area near the train station on Main Street with the, with the problems of the winter and the sidewalks and the snow and the ice and all that, and then the overall um, you know, parking issues down there. I did walk by again to the little parking lot and said to myself, remember we always talk about making it two levels, could that ever have, can any of this, can any some part of this solve some of those problems either by a, a greater study, again, an extension of the master plan, but also some things that might, I mean, you know how we've talked, yeah, of course we've talked forever about the, everybody's supposed to shovel in the winter, right? This is a big problem um, because the commuters are running down and the cars are running. It's, it's one of the things that you hear complaints about over the years. So is any of this, in a reasonable way, able to solve any of any of those kind of gateway problems that are actually part of the um, well, but that's an incurring expense. So right. Yeah. Be... Some of all of that. What's the yeah. expense? Well, of the, the the sidewalk part is a recurring expense for sure. Yes. Yes. I'm not so that I don't yes. think that matches up with the money we're talking about here. Okay. So what the, the undergrounding, the the you know how the bank used to have 
Um, the heated sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> what do they used to have? Doesn't it still? It doesn't it? It doesn't seem to work as well anymore. It's because it got damaged. My yeah, it was was it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I we, said we fixed that. that. I don't. I know the problem. I don't know the solution, but I. I was like, um, I'm not sure. Could believe that. The which happened? Um, so, I mean, what do we do with? Do we allocate money already for a traffic study? Remember what we're talking about? We talk about the no, no. I, I actually have to, on my list of things to do is to write up a simple yeah. scope for that. Right. But there's there's actually no money for that. Well, would that be well, something that, worthwhile for well, that, that's, that's, that might be. That's your Astor Street, yeah, you know, that whole right. that's, circulation. That's right. That's a lot of these. One right. other thing I'd like to just put on the table, and I don't think it's appropriate for this, but it was brought to my attention. Um, one of the members of the ambulance corps on the library board, and she nabbed me after the library board meeting. They are in desperate straits financially, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, we talked about they don't really do very effective fundraising, but they, they don't raise money. We don't give them any support. Um, she was under the impression we couldn't because they were a 501c3, but I spoke to Larry briefly about this. There are ways we could provide some funding, whether it's a good idea or not. Again, this is a bigger issue than the allocating of this particular windfall, but I just would we're talking about things we need to maybe take a look at. This should be on the list. Wow, our list is not getting smaller. <laughs> That's more. That's an interesting one because to me, there's you know a dozen years of politics as well in the yeah. background. And, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Right. So where right. you know, wherever you will be if that thing goes under, that's right. the issue. Where's the writing on the wall for the future? Talk to Greenberg and have them provide. It. Yeah. Right. We have to pay and do that, but yeah. they pay. And then you anyway, yes. Yeah. So I, I yeah, just wanted to bring it up. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. wanted. To, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, I'm not suggesting that be the. Allergy. Does anybody else see some potential for that area that I'm talking about down there? Any aspects of it for for the the, for the study that's... of it? For the, well, part of it is the traffic study. Yes, it's right. the traffic, mm -hmm. and would that would those changes work? If I mean, have, what's right? This? That's what the study. Well, is. I mean, the, the, yeah. the I always look at it just like I get pick up from the train there right. almost every day. And then but like, to me you could almost have a drop off area. Like if you move that yeah. like well that would be all part of that you can exactly well, that's so driving, it's like taking the laundry parking there was, right. there was right. more so, space there than I thought. Right. You know when so, I yeah, it's a pretty so, big so, so, so the next level of detail yeah. beyond the streetscape plan is looking at that area yes, focus right. and yeah. trying right. to get another level yes. of detail. That's right. what I need. Yes. Right. So you said it that's the the yeah. scope I have to write. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I recall that is a is the is a big part of it, but there's a little more about how you arrange that area for the drop off and yep. the, yeah. the, the, the signage. Right. Yeah. yeah, but it would include more than just in front of the train, right? Well, it, no, it is. It is more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because we've also had suggestions from the people who live on um, North Buckhead. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 About maybe uh, alternating the, the the lanes and who can turn. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. Exactly. Yeah. One direction in which way. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure how. Now we keep making a bigger study, but I'm not sure if we can. Um, that's what we to study. I think that would be a yeah. very good yeah. idea yeah. because this came up with you know the downtown group also. Yeah, we really oh, yeah. need to. Right. Yeah, yeah, this is what this. I said. What do people worry about? These are the that, that's something like your everyday right. life there. And I did look at the available parking, and you're right. There's <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing how there's no so it's been a bunch around. A lot of bugs. Yeah, yeah. there's there so. nowhere to park. It's yeah, well, I think that you know it, that could end up. Swallowing up a significant portion of that, right. and it's, it is part of yeah. our master yeah. plan. Yeah. But it's not yeah. like we need yeah. something. It's, right. it's not something that was going on. Yeah. No, but it's already yeah. 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 This is definitely related Correct. to the things we've been working on. Yeah. We would have to get public funding or something. And the trees on the main street. I didn't hear the first part. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're saying that this is the mo the money we're talking about is for a study. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, no, no, I understand. You can't do it all, right? No, of course. Because you pour three feet of sidewalk, it's hundred thousand dollars. Right. Sorry, it's not, not that bad. bad. Um, <laughs> well, it would be four and a half feet. <laughs> you know, come on. It would be nice to do some of those sidewalks during the winter. Somebody's going to kill themselves. Well, I, think I believe on your priority list was. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah enforcement. Because okay. honestly, because we're we're literally yeah. every single yes, village, yes. town, and city yes, does it. No, so we can just have to change the people's behavior. No, we're not the only one that does it. And I. 
That's well, it's a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a study for a swimming pool. I, think we I don't have want the swimming pool anymore. Right. Right. You, you, gave, you gave us the tools to enforce it properly. Yes, so. I agree. So, good, good. so where are we at? Okay. Do we have a planning for executive session. Okay, well, before that. So, oh. the real, so what, I'll, what I'll say is this. Then we don't necessarily have an exact number that we're going to be using right yeah, now or anything that like that. But we have, a, we have at least one idea. The remaining, whatever remains from this, what I would suggest is, uh, is let, let's just take round numbers. Let's say there's two hundred thousand dollars left over after this, whatever we may spend it on. That when we come to um, the, the budget for next year, that we don't introduce a two hundred thousand dollar one-time appropriation of surplus, like you were saying, that it's kind of a false reduction in taxes one time and then the next year it goes right back up. It's not even a real election year for me. Right. So. No, well, <laughs> if you want, we can match up the election schedules. <laughs> but, um, but what we do is we, we take that pot of money and we say over four years. You know what I mean? Each year you appropriate 50000 of it and, you know, you get four years. And then when you're at the end of that four years, Conditions have changed, but it's easier. No, yeah, probably, but it's easy. It's easiest to. It's, it's easy to wean yourself off of that. Yeah. You can work your way out of that one pretty easily. Yeah. It's not a, a massive number that you're now coming down. To. I like that approach. I like that. So, so uh, what do we have on the list of potentials besides the area uh, traffic uh, usage? One street tree. That's what, that's what I wanted. Do we have any bush? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I also, you know, the potential for a consultant to assist with the certification, the Climate Smart certification That's process. Easy, yeah. yeah, but I, I don't know what that is yet. Um, I'm trying to minimize as much as possible. Um, and the other one I was, uh, that I had suggested by email was, it seemed, what's the incremental cost of adding more charging stations at Aqueduct? Not, yeah, it seemed I, like the major cost was just getting connected to it. Overhead power. Yeah, I know, and I, I'll I'll find out an answer to that question. I I still don't have an answer from Con Ed about what the cost is to bring power there. That's why nothing's happened. So, but once power is there, then I, I think adding heads wouldn't be that expensive. It's probably that seems the reasonable right. guess, but uh, right. you never know. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. But we can keep that. That's on the list. Okay. We'll keep that on the list. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Oh, okay. Do we have to? Yes. Adjourn to executive session. Okay. I, will, I, will. I can motion to adjourn to executive session. Very like bargaining. Take a second. All in favor.